Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am Demetra K. I am sitting here with Donovan, the recovering Democrat Sadiq, and it is the Demetra K Show where we promote, yes, ball. Better than that wig you had on the other day. But anyway, this is the Demetra K Show where we promote black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even because we are great people, but we can always strive to do better. Like I said, big giant thank you, hello, and welcome to YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. You are the other side of the conversation. Not only are you just viewers, but you are family, and sometimes we share the link. Only thing that I ask is if I've never seen you on here before, please show me your face if your profile looks like this. If it looks like this and I have never seen you before, please show me this. And then if you do not want to have your picture up, you can blank yourself back out before I bring you up to the big screen. Just know that nobody else can see you but me until I bring you up. Other thing that I ask is that we um, watch our language and things like that. As you guys know, on these platforms, we can't say any and everything we want. Uh, so let's uh, be mindful of that. Also ask that you are respectful to everybody in the comment section on the panel and everything in between. Now, today, uh, I said we're having an open conversation for Easter. Not that it has anything to do with Easter. I forgot it was Easter, really, up until yesterday. So I do not celebrate Easter, but happy Easter to those of you guys who do celebrate. So we're not necessarily going to have an Easter conversation unless you guys want to do that in our open discussion, because that's what we're having today. Really, because I had nothing to talk about. Uh, Donovan and I spent about 45 minutes on the phone before we came on here. We talked about everything under the sun. I was like, okay, well, let's make it an open discussion then. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to solicit uh, comments and conversation from you guys. You can ask us whatever you want to ask us, and uh, we'll do our best to answer it. So there really is no topic today, but I am looking forward to seeing what you guys uh, want to discuss. Who came into the comment section before I give it to Donovan? Uh, Andre, how you doing? Says you can't wait me either because I don't know. Hey, Trish, how you doing? And uh, Quincy, what's going on? Detroit, and what's up, Miss Sweetheart? I hope you're doing well, Miss B. What's going on? Okay, Black America. Okay, you say I can now dig the hair. You talking about me or you talking about Donovan? I need to make that. I don't know what the hell you got in the background. <laughs> uh, when I get my chance, I'm gonna tell you what I got in the background. Anyway, Michael Pan, are you related to Peter Pan by any chance? I'm just kidding. I hope you are well. Hello, Easy E. I hope you're well. And Miss B said, I don't celebrate the no holidays or anything. I don't celebrate either. Oh, let me give you guys a really cute and good story. So y'all know that my father is a nation of Islam, has been there since he's 19 years old. And he uh, went to see a, a film on a UFOs, if you will. Uh, my brother, and I believe it's Ayasha Muhammad. He's going around the country promoting his uh, documentary on UFOs. And so my dad calls me this morning and I was kind of doing something. So he calls me right back. I say, hey, daddy, is everything OK? And, you know, I'm recording my videos. He's like, I just want you to know that I was watching a, uh, a premiere of the UFO movie, you know, for the Nation of Islam. And I saw you on it. They showed your face and, you know, you were talking in. And he said, that's mine. That's my daughter. <laughs> so he, you know, he didn't know that I was uh, in the film. So that brought me great joy uh, that my father was surprised to see me uh, in that. So anyway, Donovan, what say you? Happy Easter for those that believe in that Resurrection Day, whatever you call it. As a good Catholic that I am, I got up at 630 this morning, went to mass. 30 minutes, we were out of there. Je Jesus is wonderful. Bye. So if you want the Easter uh, ceremony or the uh, the celebration that was at like the 10 o'clock mass. I don't really go to that. I don't have any kids to go to do that too. Yes, Demetra, your dad was, uh, we're always proud of our children when they're doing great things. And uh, that, that was really good. I'm very sure it brought joy to his heart. Whatever those. Hey, you guys, you guys know the routine. At the bottom there, you have a scrolling banner. That is a way where you can give 100% of your contribution to the content creator. Because as you know, YouTube has to get their cut. They have to get their cut, which is about 40% of whatever you guys subscribe. So if you want to give 100, that's the way to do it. Venmo, PayPal, uh, Cash App, all of that stuff. Uh, Demetra does take that. Also, do not forget to download the African Diaspora News channel. In the news, in the African Diaspora, once again, in Haiti, Barbecue has said that if the Kenyan people step foot the police force step foot in Haiti, there's going to be a problem. 
also an African Diaspora News Channel, which I did find out. Oh, and, and by the way, fellas, go check out the African Diaspora News Channel. Some of the hosts, like Demetra, they got some nice looking women on, on uh, giving out the news there. You better believe it, baby. Yeah, they have this I'm new the best in town. Yes, they have this new African girl, and she was reporting in Cape Town, South Africa. There's, uh, they are trying to separate from the rest of Africa and form their own uh, country and nation because, again, it's been about 40 years since apartheid has stopped, and yet black people are still just running the country into the ground, and you know, there's still massive poverty and all kinds of stuff that's going on. So, anyway, how did I know about that? African Diaspora News Channel. So, fellas, if you guys want to see some really attractive women, that's another way to uh, go check that out and some great news and information. Of course, Brother Phil Scott, Dickie Dillard, Demetra, and all that other good stuff. So, anyway, in celebration of Easter, what I have in the background is you guys see the nice East Easter basket with the eggs and stuff, whatever. But I want to show you how depraved we are in the community. What you're seeing is a hairstyle. <laughs> Why would somebody come out in public with a basket full of eggs on the back of their head? Only in the black community can we be as creative as we are. And it looks like she's at the Waffle House, if you kind of uh, take a look there, whatever. But uh, open session today, we're going to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about, number one. And number two, again, for those of you guys that uh, dressed up, went out there and, and did your traditional uh, stuff, it's really great. By the way, the Democrats went out and, and panhandled and made you guys feel good, too, by showing up in your churches and all that other stuff. You don't see Republicans doing that. But uh, again, um, happy Easter to those. And uh, hopefully things will be getting better. Yeah, Donovan, be careful. And hello, Will, how are you? Talking about that woman's hair is Easter. You know, it's, just, it's time to be festive and all of that. Yeah, uh, Miss Sweet Talk, she looks like she's at the Waffle House, which I don't particularly care for, but I probably got myself in trouble uh, with even saying that as the Waffle House is uh, a big thing here in the South. And Lene, how you doing? He says, took down the P. Diddy broadcast from last Friday. I can no longer find it on the app. Uh, which And which one is that one? Uh, on which channel? Because um, I haven't taken anything down unless somebody took it down for me. Uh, Puffy Knight it says it's called being attention star to all the hair. You know, well, black women are very festive with our hair. You know what I mean? We, we like to do some pretty cool things. I think that's pretty cool, although I wouldn't like it because I don't know how you would sleep on it. Right. It'd be kind of hard to do. And as men, we're supposed to go out with this clown. And, you know, and be proud of that. I mean, come on now. It, it's 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 just too much. I, I wouldn't want me personally. I wouldn't want my woman looking like that. That that is that that's buffoonery, in my opinion. I bet you she got 511 men. OK, trying to be with that Easter eggs in the hair and all. Hey, Lynette, how you doing? Yeah, and, 50, and, and I bet all those men she got rode the short bus to school. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. Thunder, how you doing? It says, saw a report that 40% of Black Americans do not want to vote uh, in this election. Yeah, that's probably true. A lot of uh, Black Americans are saying, I'm going to vote for the couch, which means I'm going to stay home because I do not love either party. The Democrats or the Republicans, neither have done anything for us as Black people. So huh, I'm going to stay home. I'm not voting for the lesser two evils. I'll let you guys, the ones that's benefiting from that, I'll let y'all you y'all fight over that and let the chips fall where they may. <laughs> not me, you crazy. So I totally believe that report. And I'm probably... One of those that's in the 40 percent, I would say. I mean, I'm, I got a shoulder shrug out to the whole thing. Of course, they'll tell black people well, if you don't vote, that's a vote for Trump. Well, oh, well, then. So throw it in the comment section. y'all. What do you guys want to talk about? I'm interested in hearing it. Donovan and I also said that we are going to try to be here an hour. But y'all already know how that go. Every time we say that, it's like God, we, three hours later. We're hoping that's not the case, but we're going to see. I, I will. I am glad you are well. And uh, Lene says the African Diaspora app, they broadcast that Phil uh, did on, on the, so the broadcast that Phil did on P. Diddy. Uh, so is it on the app or uh, is it off of the, the YouTube channel? Because sometimes he does remove things from the YouTube channel, depending on the content and just go ahead and put it on the app. So I'm not, I don't have any information on that. Uh, Mikey said the hairstyle is a bit much. Oh, come on. It's just, just it's Easter. And Puppy says it's uh, too damn ghetto. 
But let me, let me just, okay. Maybe I'm going to throw a rock in the comment section or something. I don't know. Um, there was this video trending around, okay? It was of this sister. Now, I don't know if she's special needs or not. That's kind of maybe was the case. But nevertheless, she said that she went on a date. She met some guy on uh, like a Tinder or whatever it is, dating site. And once she got there, he accused her of catfishing, right? Because I guess on her profile picture, my daughter says that she has what they call a bust down, right? A, a nice weave and the makeup and all of that. And then she shows up and she's got what they call a twa, T-W-A, a teeny weeny afro. You know, she's dressed okay. Not, not Nothing, you know, like, oh gosh, she's a little bit on the heavy set side or whatever. So I guess the guy, from what she's saying, they ate or whatever, but did not call, contact her back because... He said she catfished him, not who she said she was on the app. And I thought about him like, well, these brothers, you brothers, run around talking about I want my woman natural. <laughs> I want my no woman natural. I don't like the wigs, the weave, the nails, and the makeup. And that sister showed up like that, and the brother said she catfished him. So I'm thinking that she showed up with more in her natural form. Wouldn't that have been a good thing? Since most of our brothers don't like all the, the additives on a woman, I'm just asking. But what you're not saying is she, uh, the pictures he saw was the only of her up. He didn't see the rest of her body. So she did kind of catfish him on that. If you guys saw the video. I mean, but I think for the most part, you see somebody, if a person is bigger boned, if you will, I think they would be that way on the top too, unless it's just, you know, <laughs> from the eyes up. I don't know. But nevertheless, she said that she, you know, he catfished her. But I thought brothers like their women more on the natural right. side. And, and speaking of big, big girls, your girl Lizzo uh, has decided she is quit music. Quit music because y'all are too damn rough about her body and stuff and all this other stuff. She's quit music. Now, I'm going to say this for me, not Demetra. I believe and I know for a fact Lizzo is a very talented musician. She is very talented. She can, she can sing. Unfortunately, in the entertainment business, it is geared toward women that look a certain way. So if you're a big woman, to me, and it really doesn't matter when it comes to her music, it doesn't matter because Aretha Franklin was a big woman. She could sing. Jennifer Holliday was a big woman. She could sing. Luther Vandross was a big dude. He can sing. In the black community, it's more about your talent. But unfortunately, we're in an age where everybody is a Stepford wife and they all look alike. They're getting the butt injections, all this other stuff like that. And, you know, they want you to look a certain way. Uh, what, what's the one girl, the white lady? Uh, Estelle or Adele? Adele, a woman that can sing. She was a big girl. And then she started hitting the gym and she got smaller. It's just, you know, it's just the, 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 how you're supposed to do it. Elizo, sweetheart, if you don't want to put in the work, to be a certain way that you think you should be in your mind, then that's on you. But your talent speaks for itself. Then that's all you need. Uh, easy. I didn't cook anything today. I, nothing at all. Um, I had yogurt and some crackers. Yogurt? Yeah. You know, Sunday I'd be busy. You know, so I don't necessarily have time to cook. Yogurt? What? Shut up. I don't even know what you mean, but shut up. <laughs> okay, so it was on the app on Friday. Okay, so and happy Easter to you as well. You guys know I don't, oops, I don't celebrate, but happy Easter to those of y'all who do. And uh, let's see here. The average logical thinker, did I say hello to you? If I didn't, how you doing? It says, I I'll say it. She looks uh, a hot damn mess. She's talking about the lady with the Easter basket. Y'all wild and uh, Black America says, Donovan, would you date an older woman? If if she is keeping herself together and, you know, and put, yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, when I was, uh, the, the mother of my children are four and five years older than me. And uh, I, I will tell you, when I was younger, I learned a lot and got the experience of that. I never really dated them that was younger than me when I was younger, in my 20s. So, yeah, I like older women. If they keep themselves together, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely date an older woman. I ain't going to say nothing because he didn't ask me. He asked Donovan. So that's Donovan's opinion. Hey, Al, he says Luke Gossip Jr. Yes, Luke Gossip Jr. Uh, I know some of y'all used to say Luke Gossip. It's not Luke Gossip. It's Luke Gossip. 
Jr. passed away, uh, which is in his 87 is what he was. Of course, he played in the copious um, amounts of movies, all types of movies. My favorite, I think, was An Officer and a Gentleman. Um, that's a movie I could watch over and over again. Of course, he starred in uh, things like Good Times or Jefferson's, I think it was. Maybe Jefferson's Good Times. Good times. Remember, he was Thelma's older boyfriend from the chicken company. Yes, he was uh, the son of the chicken tycoon or whatever. Yes, the fiddler and, and roots. Uh, and just a whole bunch of things. Uh, Powers of asset. Matthew Star. Yeah. Oh yeah. So just uh, just an asset uh, to the black community as far as Hollywood is concerned. And what uh, was his claim to fame in the entertainment industry? He was the first black to win a supporting. Oh actor. yes, yes, absolutely. So R.I.P. to Lou Gossett Jr. All right, so let's see here. Michael, you say Joe Biden's support for Black Americans dropped uh, 96 to uh, 60, 76% in, uh, in the last three years. They are frustrated with him, not delivering tangible policies for them. And yes, it's going to get worse as we progress along in the political season. Surprise there, right? And I uh, miss we talked to said I saw the video and she definitely was lying to kick it. So you talk about the lady uh, who said, uh, the guy said she catfished him. But I, I'm just wondering, hey, Corinne, I'm gonna send you a leak in just a minute. Uh, but I, I thought men like women natural, you know, and sometimes that natural hair rate all flowing down to her feet. Sometimes it's that long, you know, and sometimes she don't look like she did, you know, on her profile picture with no makeup. It's just every day. You know what I mean? Sagittarius goddess. You saying sips or you just what you do? You sipping tea? What's going on? Chop chick, how you doing? And JJ, how you doing? Says she should have posted her real photos. Yeah. Um. I, I, I totally agree with you. I think that people should post their real photos of how you look, especially if you're on these apps. But we know, especially with these filters and things like that, you know, have you seen those uh, those memes that says when you order something off of, let's say, Wish, I don't even know if Wish exists anymore, but Timo or whatever, what I ordered and what I got. <laughs> Sometimes that's how people look when they show up to dates. You see them on their profile pictures and they got this angle and they got the apps and stuff. But when you see them, you're like, hmm. What happened to the person that was on the profile picture? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't think that's a phenomenon just to the internet. How many of you guys have been to the funerals of your grandparents or your uncle or somebody or your aunt? And you look at the program, it's never a picture of what they look like today. It's always when they were in high school or when they were young, you know, that little bar picture or something where they're younger. You never see the, the, the current picture. It's always the old, the younger picture. No ring on my finger. I am not married. No, not married. Black America says, Black America says we don't like fat women. They probably don't like you either. So there. <laughs> All right, of course, y'all talking about Lizzo. Yeah, Lizzo says she's quitting because of uh, the harassment, the bullying. Feel like she can't do anything right. People lying on her and stuff. I will say that I really feel sorry for Lizzo. Um, I know she's made some... I don't want to say mistakes, but, you know, just she's done some things that people don't like. She's done a lot of things that I don't like, but I don't think that she should be bullied and harassed and, you know, be the punching bag for everybody to pick on or compare uh, other women, black women to and all this other stuff. Uh, because we know that they nobody does that to white women or any other woman that is not considered to be overweight or whatever the case is. I don't care what you do in your life. And this is what I said, too, about the Internet. Um, I was explaining this to somebody the other day. I said, when we first got on uh, Facebook and social media, it was 2009 when I got on. Um, it was really about sharing your photos and little cute little posts and things like that. But now it has become, uh, become a very evil, mean place. Whereas I, I call it an evil think tank, right? That's the comment section. They see something usually posted by the blogs and then everybody has this opinion. You did shit, you did shit. And it's like, well, who are you to, to sit up there and ride somebody to the point of quitting? Ride somebody to the point of depression or even wanting to harm themselves. I, I, I hate that we as a society has come to the point of judging people uh, to the point of they just quit. You know, because imagine if you had the spotlight and every time you did something, and I, I know I, I get it, you can't please everybody, but golly, some people, they just, they, they, they wake up with a, I was going to say something dirty, but they wake up wanting to just, uh, you, I, I'm going to tell you, and this is why I tell people all the time, every morning when you wake up, make sure that you reinforce to yourself that you are somebody, you're important and stuff because there's somebody, and usually it's online, 
now waiting to tell you you ain't ish. You don't matter. So you have to know who you are. Otherwise, other people will tell you that. So I'm not sure what's going on with Lizzo, but I surely do not think it's right that people feel like they can pick on her. What are you doing in your house that is not on the internet that somebody can find fault in you and pick on you to where you want to quit? That's what we have to ask ourselves. But I have a question for you. So, so you think it's correct for Lizzo to, to uh, is it, you think it's appropriate? And I, I know you don't think it's appropriate, but when you, you, when you bring attention to yourself, then you, you subject yourself to be criticized. So when she's on there taking craps on the toilet and showing her nasty, fat nastiness and stuff like that, Where you don't expect that. Yeah, she, she, she was, she, she would be, the, there were incidents where she was actually taking a crap on the toilet. And she was on whatever platform it was, and she doesn't expect no no blowback from that. Nobody to have an opinion about that. Like I said, you know, I know social media is not real to a point, but when you're an entertainer and you're putting yourself out there, nobody wants to see uh, inappropriate pictures, you know, in, in regards to big people or you know smaller people or things like that. So when when you do that, you got to take accountability for what you do too. If she doesn't want people to criticize her on, on her size and all this other stuff, then stop talking about it on social media. Stop posting it on social media. Would you agree with that? Um, I, I mean, I, yeah, I agree that whatever you post uh, could have ramifications, have people talk about it. But at what point do you stop? What point do you say, OK, I said my piece and I'm going to leave it alone? I know for a long time, Dr. Boyce Watkins made it his you know point to just harass her to the point of where you know, it, it caused her depression and tears. And I made a video about it. I'm like, you lay next to a woman who was a black psychologist and she's all right with you bullying a black woman. See, because it becomes a point to bullying somebody. Is it, are you bullying or are you making commentary? And a lot of people are just bullying her. Like, all right, yeah, she does some things to bring it on herself, but why do you, like my dad always says, never let a classless person outclass you. So you don't like what she does. And let's keep it a buck. Whether it's Gabourey, Sidibe, or Lizzo, that they are like the punching bag for black women because they're what fat and black, but nobody gets the amount of criticism that they have. And I would just be all right with people just say it's because they're fat black women, but they're skinny black women um, who do things like that. They might get a little uh, commentary, but it's never to the point of bullying them to where uh, it, it, it's harmful. You know what I mean? So I think we need to be honest with that because all women don't get that criticism. Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, they get some or whatever, but they don't get the type of criticism that Lizzo gets. Right. But Demetra, in the world that we live in, where black people are at the bottom and we're the, you know, we get crapped on, we're discriminated against and all this other stuff. How is that not a reality? What are we telling our kids? You know, I used to tell my sons all the time. I'm not saying because you're dark skinned, that that makes you any lesser than anybody else. But the reality is this country that we live in, your black skin is a disadvantage. That's the real world. So what are we telling these girls when, you know, of course you're, you're going to get more flack. You're a black girl. You're a black person. You're going to get more flack than, than everybody else. That That's just common sense, right? Um, no, why? But why though? And I'm going to, I'm going to, because it's the real world. It's not the world we want to be in. It's the world we live why in. Do right? We got to do that to each other. If we know that, especially with why, when you, finish, yeah. you, you ask me a question, let me ask white supremacy or whatever is doing that to us. Why do we got to join in on that? You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not saying that Lizzo is not bringing some of that on herself, but who are we to bully people? Who are, who has given us the right or anybody to bully people? If you don't like what she does, okay, I don't like it, whatever. I've said that, but I'm not bully Lizzo. I have not, because that's not my right to do that to her. We can't make Lizzo do or not do anything, but I don't care what nobody says. It's because she is a fat black woman that, and I've seen people like Rock Newman, who I think is, uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, pillars of black voices in our community have been for a long time, but he gets up on his platform and bullies and calls her names and stuff. It's like, come on, Rock. Are ratings low? I don't know. But I think Lizzo is an easy target, but nobody else gets that but black women. And God forbid she be fat. Hey, Pamela, how you doing? No, I, uh, again, and, 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 and I'm not saying what you're saying is not right or wrong, but that's human nature. Human nature, like animals. When, when there's a weak person in the animal kingdom, the rest of the things, they sense that and they attack it or they do it. We're, we're no different than animals. We do the same thing. It's just the nature of the beast. How many fellas, how many of you guys were in, in, in high school 
And not saying that you were the one that got picked on or that was bullied on or whatever, but it, but that went on. It was a common thing, and it was no big deal. It was it was a back in the day that was a rite of passage. You didn't see us, our generation, and the generation before us going and and shooting up schools because we were bullied. Now what's going on? They don't do this. They don't do that. And you know it's all going. Hey, I'm not saying it's, it it is what it is, but the point is, human nature of of the beast in us, our animalistic instincts, certain people are going to be picked on, certain, certain people aren't. I got picked on in high school all throughout my uh, grade school years. And the only thing that I could do was stand up for myself and fight back. And by fighting back, the bullies, whatever you want to call them, they respected me and left me alone. Because even though I didn't win, I gave them all they can handle. It is just part of life, period. Hey, Clover Lane, how you doing? And I'm going to get to the comment about uh, Candace Owens as well. Uh, in a club where you say mental health has always been ignored in the community. Yeah. And Donovan, you say it's human nature. Is it human nature to be evil to people? Why isn't it? Why can't it be human nature to be nice to people? You know yeah. what I mean? As, as we were always taught, I was, you know, um, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it. And I get it. We are in, in the age of social media where everybody think they got the damn right to espouse their beliefs and opinions on everybody. Those are your opinions, they're not, not, not mine. You may say something to me, but if I don't want to acquiesce to what you're saying, then leave me alone. Anything else is bullying. So is it human nature to be evil to people? I yes, don't know. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I, wait, wait, and I, I'm going to tell you why. Because we're not all the same. You've got a certain group of people that will drink the Kool-Aid. you got a certain people that won't drink the Kool-Aid. We are not the same. Certain people have certain traits. Yes, it is in human nature to be evil. There's in human nature to be nice. There's human nature to be gay. There's human, you know, there's all kinds of different aspects within within the community. So yes, you're going to have those people. Would I bully uh, a Lizzo? No, like I said, on this show, I think she's very talented. Her her talent speaks for herself and as far as I'm, I'm concerned. But yes, we got to stop playing this game of everybody should be the same. Everybody's not the same. And we've got to accept that. There are going to be some a assholes out there, excuse my language, some a some a-holes out there, and there's going to be some nice people. It's just the way it is. So the, in that same vein, we say we got to accept that everybody is not the same. We also need to accept that everybody is not a size two. Exactly. Absolutely. I agree. And uh, let's see here. So the, the comment about Candace Owens are uh, basically, are we going to accept her back? I think that was kind of the question. Um, it's not for me to accept Candace Owens back. We know that Candace Owens has made a bag uh, telling uh, white people what they want to hear and believe about, um, I know, at this point. And so, yeah, now she's uh, trying to do a 180, I guess. Hey, how y'all doing, my people? Um, so I don't have an opinion on Candace other than the one that I've always had. I think uh, she has done herself a disservice. And she's also tried to do black people a disservice by uh, saying a lot of things that she has said. But we always know how that works out. White supremacy going to kick it with you up to a point and then they're going to remind you of who you are. And she's no different. So um, I do like what Candace always has said, you know, as far as black people need to make an exit from the Democratic Party. But she's also said a whole lot of other things that uh, was not cool to say about black people. So hopefully, you know, white people will forgive her, or whatever the case is, and they'll welcome her back. Um, but as for now, I, I don't, I don't think that Candace is any different. I think she's acting. And um, remember, at the end of the day, white supremacy always breaks its tools after it's done with them. Show me somebody who worked in the service of white supremacy, and they're out here making a bag and doing what they're doing. They're usually, they're usually destroyed. Their money's cut off. What was her Amarosa? Look at her. She's over here bigging and biting to get whatever she can get and scraps and all this other stuff. White supremacy always breaks its tools when they're done with them. Yeah. So uh, Lene says, I don't think Dr. Watkins bullied her. He was making a point that promoting obesity as body positivity is unhealthy. He was fat. He was fat at one point in time. And there's nobody bullying him when he was fat. Now that he ain't fat no more. So he think he has the right to bully people. And, you know, who was he to, to make, con and it wasn't just once, it was over and over. It was to the point to where even uh, people who followed him was like, man, what's your obsession with her? Like, that's bullying her. Leave her alone. And I called upon his wife. You lay next to this man and you think that's cool. You a psychologist. You know what it means when you uh, bully people. It causes them uh, mental distress. And you should be uh, calling your man to a higher standard. What you got, a, a, a thing for Lizzo? Or is she just, because she's trending, are you clout chasing? 
to continue mentioning her name. So I get if you make a commentary, but it's not up to him to tell her to lose weight. Like I said, he was fat not that long ago himself. And all of a sudden he lose 2.3 pounds. He got the right to talk about somebody else's weight. Because that's one thing about weight loss is you can find that weight again too. So be careful what you say to people. All uh, right, puppy. Uh, this ain't Puff Daddy, is it? You say, uh, <laughs> he say, Demetri, I love you, but you're making excuses for Lizzo. I'm not making excuses for Lizzo. I've said a lot of things about Lizzo that I don't like, but I know the difference between bullying and making commentary. And a lot of people, unfortunately, are big, mean, grown adult bullies who think that they have the right to talk about somebody's weight or whatever the case is. Has she done things and said things that's problematic? Yeah, but it's not my job. Lizzo don't have to listen to me. If Lizzo is not listening to me, anything else is you're forcing your opinion on her. But let's see what you guys do in your regular life. And I'm sure people have something to say. You ain't going to be, well, wow, that's just the way it is. You're going to have an issue with that, too. So I'm not making excuses. I'm asking us to let's not bully people. That's all I'm saying. Demetria, you used to be fat. Uh, and so was your mama. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and and fat is subjective, you know, because as some people say, more pushing to the cushion, more bounce to the ounce or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And Lizzo got a man. Lizzo's got had a man for a very long time. She had a man, that man and her have been together before she got, when she was famous. And one of the most famous people in the history of the world, Prince found Lizzo. She's a protege of Prince. If you guys did not know that, by the way. So if Prince, she was all right with Prince, she all right with me, all right, be. Uh, and Josh says, gotta love Democrats. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Demetrius Hart, sweet uh, Phil in the heart. Okay. <laughs> hey, Brina, how you doing? And let's see, I'm gonna skip down a little bit, you guys, so I can catch up. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, after logical thing, he says, sorry, Demetrius, kind of comes with the territory. It's not fair at all, but it's uh, the way it is. Lizzo antagonizes people with weight and cries. Uh, later, is she in antagonizing y'all, or she said, I'm happy with my weight? See, that's a difference. And to say that she's antagonizing exactly what is she doing to anybody that makes people feel a way. Is she saying, I'm okay with my, my weight? I'm uh, is, This is body positivity to me. So how is that antagonistic to anybody else? Because we don't have to live in her body. She does. So are we mad because she's proud of her weight and who she is? Or do we not want her to be? I guess maybe I just, you know, don't have all the information. Yes, yeah, Sagittarius God it says grown ass people bullying. Yeah, and that's exactly what it is. Baby girl, uh, baby goat 05 says so because she's fat, she doesn't deserve to partake in social media harassment. Uh uh, uh harassment free like everyone else. So you saying she doesn't um deserve to be on social media harassment free. Yeah, I think she does, but ap apparently a lot of people don't think she should. Um, all right, and easy says correction, Donovan. We don't shoot up schools, that's them crazy Columbine kids, okay. Uh, Thundee says, uh, that's the one bro. Donovan, uh, have you, you have great taste in music. Okay. And, uh, Michael, he says, Demetri and Donovan, why is mental health encouraged for black women, but, uh, it's taboo for black men. Uh, I never got it. It's actually taboo in the black community in general. So it's not just, uh, black men and, and black women. We in the black community have been taught to pray, go to church. It's going to be all right. Take some role with us and have some ginger ale. Well, ain't nothing wrong with you, you know, whatever the case is. So I would, it's not just for black, uh, a taboo for black men, it's taboo uh, for black women as well. But everybody needs to talk to somebody sometime in their life. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I have no problem saying this. I mean, I, I, I talk to a therapist once a week, it's costing the taxpayer about a thousand dollars. So you can thank you guys for the therapy. But the point is, uh, it isn't, you know, because I'm crazy or maybe, well, Demetri will say I'm because I'm crazy, but. The point is, everybody needs somebody to talk to and, and do these things. Now, I'm, I'm a bachelor. I live by myself. My animals, can't, they can't respond to what I need to say. So sometimes dealing with this woman right here, I need a therapist to talk to to get stuff off my chest because she won't listen. Okay, so, But anyway, but no, I, I really don't understand the stigma within the Black community about getting uh, some kind of mental health uh, therapy. Because let me, let me tell you something. There was a study done about 30 years ago. And the study had to do with kids in the Middle East, mostly in Palestine, and how they live under this constant barrage of uh, combat. You know, they're in this PTSD type mode where things are exploding, people are being killed, whatever the deal is. They took that study, true story, 
out of all of the people in the United States, the only group that was similar to people in a combat situation was the black community. Within our community, our kids, of course we know post-traumatic slave disorder is a big issue of it, but our group of people in the United States had the same symptoms of people who live in a combat or a, uh, a military type zone of type people. Now, if you're growing up in that 20, 18, 20 years, you don't think that you have some kind of psychological problem where you could be the, the, the best person on paper, smarter and more education, and somebody's hired over you. You don't think that has a mental effect on you? The color of your skin, you can't do this or you can't go here without being harassed by the police. You don't think that has a mental effect on you? It does. But that was a study done over 30 years ago. Where the, And guess what? Has the United States government done anything about it within the black community? No. They, they want you to be crazy. They want you to run around and give excuses to lock you up. And that's why Joe Biden, during the time of the 1995 crime bill, is when that bill was written and this study had actually happened. They want these people to, to, to fill up these prisons. That's what they want. You explain to me, how is it that I believe 70% of jails or something, it's a high percentage of black people that are in jails around the nation, but yet we're supposedly only 13% of the population. Explain that. Explain it. Willie, how you doing? Says, oh, what did you pagans do for Easter? And some other word. Y'all make any blood sacrifices. I don't know who this y'all you talking about. I don't celebrate Easter at all. But for those who, who do, I don't knock it. You know, it's just not for me. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't do anything for Easter. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Samuel, you say, Amorosa, Stacey Dash are both finished. Should never be welcome back in the uh, black space diaspora. Well, I, I, I'm one of those people never say never. I think people evolve and they do learn. Um, I just don't think those two ladies are there yet. Uh, but I also ask myself this. How is it that we won't uh, welcome our own back, but we always welcome back white folks when they do stuff to us? We, oh, okay. You know, they invited to picnics and barbecues and all kind of stuff. But when it comes to our own, and trust me, I am no friend of Candace Owens at all. Trust me. But when it comes to our own, it's like we were very austere um, with them. I don't know. Is it because they should know better? I don't know. Just asking. Um, all right. So let me get to some of these comments. Okay. Okay. So I see y'all. Uh, still talking about Liz Olney and uh, Till Dog says, Dr. Moise, oh Lord have mercy. Watkins does that a lot to people never seen and so-called financial analysts have his nose in so many people's business, right? He's supposed to be talking about money, but then he sit up for a whole 53 weeks talking about Lizzo. It's like, if you like Lizzo, just say that. You know, if you, you your wife ain't cutting it for you, bro, just say that too. I don't know. Gerard said he was cloud chasing and it raised her status to be uh, married to him. And Brina, he says, it's immature for grownups to spend their time talking about each other. It's petty and doesn't result in progression for anyone. That's, to me, the one of the best comments. You're absolutely right. They say people, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase this, but people who don't have a lot going on sit up and talk about other people. But people who have some things going on talk about ideas, right? Um, Small-minded people is what it is. They talk about other people all day long. Yang, 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 yang. Look at them. Look at them. Yang, yang, yang. But people with big minds and great ideas, they talk about um, things that, you know, are progression and production and all that other stuff. So you got to ask yourself, wh which one are you? You, you, you small minded and you talk about other people all day long or you big minded and you talking about ideas? That's really where it's at. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Let me skip down. Yes, it is Black America, fat as subjectives. You know, a 300-pound woman might be the bomb to a man or, or vice versa. So it's in the eye to behold a Jeff. How you doing? Says Buenos Aires, Demetra. Yo, Donovan, what's up, my people? I got a call in one of these days. Yes, you do. And Willie says, I need to have a drink. Got to just listen and watch on the big screen to all um, over my comments. Okay. Well, have a drink for me. <laughs> I miss we talk. She said, I didn't know Prince found it. Lizzo. Yes, found it. Lizzo. That is, uh, she is a protege. Of Prince. And uh, Puffy says, uh, Prince was just being nice. That heifer wasn't no talent. Please, Lizzo could sing anybody on this thread under a rug. And she plays um, uh, some uh, instruments just like Prince. And we are, uh, come on now. Uh, I, I think it's an uh, insult to Prince for him to say uh, that he was just being nice because I'm sure Prince came across a whole lot of people that wanted his, you know, blessing, if you will. And he did not give it to him. In fact, he was asked about Beyonce back in the day. He was doing a word association and he was supposed to say the first thing that came to his mind when um, 
that person, that, that particular talent was mentioned. And they, the person says, Alicia Keys. And he says, genius. It said, Beyonce said Nickelodeon. So I know that they ended up performing together a time or two, but that was what he thought of Beyonce. And so, you know, to say that Prince is just running around signing people to be nice, I don't think that was the case. Uh, but anyway, let's move right along. I'm going to skip down. Okay, uh, let's get past the Lizzo talk. Um, see, y'all bullying Lizzo again. I I'm seeing some of these uh, comments in here. Valerie, did, if I didn't already, how you doing? It says, how about that Putin bring the light to truth about black Jesus. And now he's trying to make uh, deals with Africa. Uh, they better not kick one evil out to allow another one in. Yeah. We kind of talked about that last week as well as uh, Putin, Russia disclosing that uh, Jesus was black, but who didn't already know that? I know there was a lot of people who didn't, but we, we, we knew that, right? Bro, how you doing? Says Demetri, if Lizzo is happy with her weight, that is fine with me. I better hear her or women like her talk about a man. I better not think of it. A, a man's weight. Women can be some of the most hypocritical people on the planet. Yeah, but I've never heard Lizzo talk about any man's weight. But um, I agree that if she's happy, I'm happy because it's not for me to not to be unhappy. You know what Lizzo eats don't do nothing for me. Uh, M, how you doing? Says it's very telling if she was a drug addict on the verge of losing her life on an overdose. Nobody would say anything. There are only two sins in Hollywood: being fat and broke. Everything else goes. Ooh, you said a word right there. Brina says, I would love to see the way men treat her after she loses weight. Next thing you know, everyone had a crush on you. Annoying. I think she's um, losing some weight um, right now. Uh, Isaiah 54, 17, how you doing? Says, hey, Demetri and Donovan. Demetri, I must say, oh, well, thank you so much. Looking sassy. I'm sassy, too. I'm just playing, but thank you. JJ says, I think the uh, W.E. Du Bois, E.B. Du Bois, I said that insanity is only one step away from the Negro or something like that because of our historical abuse. Oh, yeah. Dr. Joy DeGruy talked about that in the uh, post-traumatic slave disorder and how we are still suffering. It will happen to our ancestors from slavery. We just never were healed. In fact, she said we are un unwell people. And forgive me if it seems like I'm freezing up a little bit, but it'll come back. Sister B says, being black in America is cause for needing a therapist as a way of life. You ain't lying. Being forever, how you doing? It says, Easter is a white Christian ho a pagan holiday, and I hope you're doing well. Reality with GP, how you doing? It says, I just got here, but I already have to go because my 73-year-old friend with... Wait, hold on. My 79-year-old friend with benefits just called me and asked me to head to her house. I'll... some WF the stream some other time. Young man, what you going to be doing with a 70? Never mind. I'm hoping that yeah, you're just taking her a little bit gay over there, you know, for her knees. Uh, Black America says Stacey Dash was fine as hell, too. You're a very good looking woman. Michelle says 1994 crime bill with Bill Clinton and Joe Biden. Uh, yes, indeed. And uh, your average logical thinker says facts to me. We always accept others BS uh, but each other. Nope. Uh, hold a grudge forever. Yep. And Enlighten, um, how you doing? He said, did you guys forget how Lizzo was treating her background dancers on tour? Lizzo was not an angel. She treated dancers like ish. Did y'all forget that she was abused? Uh, abused her? That's a, those are allegations. And also, I, if you watch the other interview, when those jam dancers were asked, because uh, the one allegation is that uh, Lizzo told her dancers that they were f fat and overweight. And when those dancers were asked, did she say that to you? She says no. And they asked, well, what did she say? What is, she said that Lizzo noticed that our performance was lacking um, and that they weren't keeping up with the dance movements. And so uh, more than likely they were fighting on performance. But the uh, the girl said, no, she never did say that. But the blogs ran away with that Lizzo was being abusive and all that. And it's more than likely a money grab. But again, people just believe everything. But watch all of it. If we're going to make a, um, you know, make an assumption. Now, I'm not saying that Lizzo didn't do anything, but that, no. The lady even herself could not say that Lizzo called her fat and all that other stuff. So it's going to court. What happens, what happens? You know, I don't know. Keisha, how you doing? So Demetri, uh, you just said a word. We are good to welcome everybody back except for our own. Yeah, and that, that that's, we sick. And I'm not saying that we should be accepting of degenerate behavior, but white folks do, should, uh, oh, I almost said the S word. It's Easter. But, uh, white folks do stuff to us all the time and we, okay, mom, well, I forgive you. You what you bring it to you? Yes, you can bring your potatoes or raisins and uh salad and raisins to the barbecue, but black people, I, I, I don't mess with her no more. I don't know. Uh, uh, slaves. We slaves in our thinking. I, I, I don't, it's just I don't. Of course, no, I'm not welcoming folks. Yeah, I mean, some people don't deserve a well, you know. 
Uh, uh, Puppy says he obviously don't like Boyce just because he told the truth. No, I, I don't like or dislike Boyce at all. Did Boyce tell the truth or was he bullying people? It was, it was nasty. Nasty. And, you know, sometimes the truth is nasty. But what are you saying, brother? You think you did like you supposed to be teaching black people to be financially literate and you sitting up there called uh, bullying a black woman all damn day long? Sounds like you bored. Sounds like black people ain't listening to you and Boyce Walker's got his own fish to fry because he was caught doing his, uh, uh, being in bed, if you will, with some people he shouldn't be in bed with, like that of Charles Wu, who paid him allegedly to dupe the black community and making us think that he was for the financial well uh, betterment of black people. And that's documented. So while he is throwing glass or stones at other people's glass houses, he might want to put some covering on his glass windows. I'm just saying, but I don't dislike or like uh, boys, but I don't like anybody. I don't care who it is, Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, whoever, bullying people because they feel like they got this God complex and I can sit up and judge you. You better be careful because you're going to be judged one day and you ain't going to like it. I'm just saying. Ooh, look at that face. Y'all got her triggered. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I'm going to skip down for real this time. Dusty Hotel, where you be? You see, say Boyce is one of the biggest simps on the internet. He is uh, talking about her weight, or is he speaking about uh, the promotion of obesity? Is, is Lizzo promote like, okay, this is the other thing. See, on one hand, we talk about I'm a dose, I do what I want to do, but then on the next, you blaming Lizzo, and you know, y'all think she's telling people to be fat. Can Lizzo tell you to be fat if you don't want to be fat? Is Lizzo telling you to put a, 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 a Twinkie or a ho-ho or whatever in your mouth? That's on you. Even if she was telling you to do that, you were still a grown-ass mom. I almost said another bad word. You grown. You grown. Lizzo ain't making you do nothing. But then on the other hand, a lot of people, you know, talk, let me shut up. But yeah, yeah, Lizzo ain't making nobody fat. She's not promoting obesity. And if she was, what you going to do about it? What are you going to do? You can't check Lizzo. If See, that's bullying right there. That's bullying right there, what you just did. What you going to do about I'm it? Saying, I'm intimidating. You ain't going to do nothing about it. You can't even do that about it. Yeah. Some of y'all got fat women living in your house, but you ain't going to talk about that. But you want to get on the internet and tell Lizzo not to be fat? Don't you say nothing about my mama? Don't you say a doggone thing about and my you mama? you did. <laughs> I didn't say that. You did. And I know your mama is far from fat, okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, Willie says, people are watching less. Uh, get on to something everyone can see 2024. I mean, well, what y'all want to talk about? JT Devereaux, how you doing? It says, must be nice. For real, for real. Let me skip down. Uh, Easy says, walking is a scam. Oh, boy, I ain't going to go into that. That's what they say. I don't know how true it is because I've never done business with boys walking. So I'll you know, let everybody else make that decision. Hello, Rosalyn. I hope you are. I mean, uh, you know what? I've been calling you Rosalyn this whole time and it's uh, Rollins. My bad. I'm sorry. Well, how you doing? Uh, yeah, I was article cool thing says, come on, Demetrius, okay, cuss every now and again. I'm a lady. I don't like to be cussing on here. Um, I, I do cuss behind the scenes, and I, I've cut down on that a lot. But yeah, sometimes I'll be wanting to say stuff. Terrell, how you doing? Uh, and uh, Isaiah says, Demetrius, I saw your story on the elderly black couple whose home was stole, uh, sold without their knowledge, and now they are homeless. I pray that someone can help them. The people involved will not prosper. Yes, those are elderly black couple, uh, the almonds in uh, Georgia, Stone Mountain. Uh, somehow their house was stolen from them through fraud. Somebody took out a second mortgage. They didn't have a mortgage. Uh, and then next thing they knew, their stuff was being thrown out on the lawn because somebody purchased it uh, and there was nothing they could do about it. I guess the laws there in Georgia are kind of weird uh, to where uh, you could... I guess do deeds, stuff and like that online. You don't really need an ID. And uh, unfortunately, that elderly black couple, the man went to jail and the wife was sleeping in her car because they had no other family and nowhere to go. So um, I haven't followed up on that story, but I'm hoping that somebody has helped them as well. But see, that's the stuff we need to be talking about instead of talking about Lizzo. We need to be talking about helping our elderly people who have been duped out of their home uh, and have nowhere to go. That's the stuff that matters, not Lizzo and what she's eating. Absolutely. We need to start holding our representatives accountable, the Democratic Party, over a million veterans, veterans sitting out there on the streets, homeless. We can't solve that problem, but we can house people who came here illegally. Make it make sense. 
Right, Angela. Thank you so much. He says, hello, I love your hair. He says, there are more important issues we need to uh, concern ourselves with. We are being evaded, killed, suffering from inflation and homelessness. Yeah. And people want to talk about, you know, Lizzo. Um, I think at the end of the day, Lizzo will be all right. But yeah, we got a lot of other things uh, to be focused on. I'm going to just skip down a little bit because I know I'm behind. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> it is a shame, uh, Samuel, that uh, grown people are bullying Lizzo. It's like, find something to do. And Willie says, uh, to you all got to get on to something else. Yeah, well, throw it in the comment section, which I want to talk about. Buckhorse, how you doing? It says, DC is here. Shalom, family. No Easter for me. I'm Hebrew, y'all. All right. Yep, no no Easter for me. I just want to know how the Easter bunny got involved with uh, Easter. The bunny, rather. What what is what is the bunny got to do with Jesus and the resurrection? I would imagine money, right? Corporations. Uh, M says we promote worse things than obesity in our media, but I like like I said, there are only two sins in Hollywood: being fat and broke, dope, murder, arrogance, violence, promiscuity. All okay, yeah, but we take up the, you know, we want to ride down on Lizzo. It's just it's 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 hate is what it is. I'm not saying that she has done anything uh, not done anything problematic, but it is a lot of self hate. And I just think, unfortunately, uh, fat people, fat black women are easy marks because they know most people won't care. They will, in fact, join in on it. I just won't be one of them. Uh, and uh, Miss B says, y'all, please leave Judge Demetra alone. Yeah, y'all leave me alone. <laughs> uh, black America says vets are homeless because they want to be. Okay. Uh, Puffy says, not just veterans, folks, period. So y'all talking about when Donovan was saying, all right, let me skip down. Patricia, how you doing? <clears throat> you say Jersey City in the house. All right. Easy. You say D, they need to close that loop hole in the system, allowing people to easily steal people, uh, people's D's on their, to their homes and the notaries need to do their job. Yeah. So that's the other thing. Uh, and I used to be a notary when I was in California. In fact, I still am, I think. Uh but yeah, notaries are supposed to check IDs, make sure the signatures and everything match. But sometimes notaries don't. They're like, all right, you good, stamp. And then somebody stole somebody's house. And uh, unfortunately, the uh, elderly black couple thought they can handle it themselves. So they tried to do the paperwork uh, at the court, but it didn't go through. They probably needed a lawyer. They're probably just thinking there's no way this is going to happen to us. But it did. And uh, whoever uh, bought the house was some foreigner. They didn't show his face. Brought the house and told them to get off my property. And had their uh, belongings uh, all uh, on the front yard. It's very sad. It made me really mad. It, it really did. Uh, AJ, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. Long time no see. I see you always traveling um, all over. Uh, all right. And so, oh, did I get to the bottom? I did. Valerie says, you can't go into any country and enjoy their citizens' uh, benefit. Uh, this needs to stop. Yeah, but you Especially can't illegally, you will be thrown into their jail. No questions asked. There is no social safety net. None of that. Show me a country where you can go into their country, apply for benefits, even just basic food stamps, and they're going to give them to you. There's nowhere in the world that, that that's being done like that. You can't go into these countries if you're not a citizen and get any kind of help or benefits. It's not going to happen. Matter of fact, if you want to own property in a lot of these countries, you got to marry somebody who's actually from there and everything has to be in their name. Yes, and Jeb says Easter was originally called Ishar, and it was uh, about fertility. That's why the rabbits and eggs, uh, and it has some rated R details, meaning stuff about um, orgy, et cetera. I don't celebrate Easter. Yes, yeah, so um, absolutely. Um, actually, uh, comes more from Kemet, Egypt. And of course, um, Christianity has been accused of ripping off the uh, practices, if you will, of Kemet, Egypt. So yeah, that's just um, one of them. So yeah, I, I get that, but... Uh, it's, it's you see more people talk about the Easter bunny, Easter egg haunts and, you know, all that other stuff. And it's like, I don't want to get into it, but in fact, I won't because we're not going to be talking about religion. But yeah, thank you for that. Carlos is in the building and I'm going to share the link for everybody else. In just a minute. Let me get down to these comments really quick. And our uh, Rowling, you say my show today was about the illegal uh, migrant squatting and stealing America's homes and properties. Yeah. And it sounds like now. Uh, some of these states are changing the laws because it's all fun and games, you know, when people, uh, uh, when it's done on a smaller level, but now they're seeing, of course, hearing the migrants talking about, this is how you can get to America, find an empty home and get up in it. And it's going to take them a long time to get you out. And so now a lot of states are starting to change the laws. Uh, originally, those laws were put into place to, to help tenants from greedy landlords and landlords who just were not doing right 
uh, by the tenants, but it, the loopholes backfired and um, opened up uh, a culture of squatting, if you will. Squatting means you find somebody's house that's vacant and saying, it's mine, it's not. It's called due process. It's going to take you a long time to get me up out of here. So, uh, yeah, and it wasn't that guy arrested. He, 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 I think he was actually arrested and he's waiting. He was. To, but, but here's the thing, you guys, about that young man that was arrested that put all that out there. He has a child that was born here in the United States. So guess what? Guess what? He's going to be back. If Joe Biden gets back in office, these people that are being deported, they are going to be coming back because in the time that it takes to get to their court dates, you're talking about two or three years, these people are having babies. So what does that make the baby? An American citizen. And that American citizen is now the anchor baby so that they could now file other petitions to be here legally. Because who's going to take care of that baby? You got to let the parents stay here. So, so it's not the, the initial migrants that come here that we're worried about. It's the next generation. Yes, indeed. And uh, let's, maybe we could um, discuss this Corliss and Donovan. Oh, that, as y'all heard me say when I first came on here, let's get ready to rumble. Lord, I ain't ready to rumble, y'all. I'm really not. Wait, and, and, and real quick, I want to cut you off. I want to give a, a shout out to Demetra's uh, crush, the Honorable Julius Malima. That is my crush. I love him. One day, you know, hopefully I will get to meet him. I know he's married. I just want to say hello. Hello. How you doing? I love the work that you're doing. Keep it up. You go. All right. So y'all ready for this? My dear brother, Quincy X. He says, I guess, believe all women is subjective. Um, I would say so because some people think, yeah, you should believe all women. And some people say you shouldn't believe all women. So yeah, I, I guess so. But, um, I guess you're maybe referencing during the Me Too movement, uh, when the Me Too, when they were saying men, it was predominantly women saying men from Hollywood and everywhere else did something to them. And then there was the other saying that came out of that, believe all women. And a lot of people ran around talking about believe all women. I just wasn't one of them. So Corliss, what's on, what's on your mind? Some women ain't believable. I'm just saying. Like the, well, I'll give you a quick example. I don't know the gentleman's name, Long Beach Polly. Sat in jail for a whole bunch of years for a rape he didn't do. The girl got paid by the school district. Black girl, black mama. And come to find out, it wasn't nothing what he, she said. And he didn't done all this time, lost his scholarship, everything. But he did come back. They did go back and get him. But the point is, for some of these broad that's unbelievable, and you do believe them, you need to go back and give them that same spoon of medicine that they dished out. They also, too, should do prison time. And you should go back and you should have to pay restitution like they do everybody else. I don't think they should let these women walk free. Or if you don't know who your baby daddy is and you go pin them on somebody. Everybody. I don't care if the daddy signed the birth certificate. You need to get a birth, uh, uh, um, a paternity test. Because you just got some dudes out here that's just all around good dudes. And they'll sign a birth certificate. Then you find out when they 21 and the kid need a kidney. Oh, well, my blood don't match. Well, why? Because you ain't the daddy. Yeah. So, so, so let me ask you this question. So are, so are you saying in the modern age now, women are cheating just as much as men? Shit, we cheat more. You just don't know it. I'm just saying. And I'm there not letting it is. There it is. is. I'm not saying all women, right? Because just like all men don't cheat, all women don't cheat. But you give us a reason. We sure going to give you a run for your damn money. Now, let me but, ask you this, Carlos, with, 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 with that analogy. Would you say that the outcome between men and because we're different, we have the, some of the same mannerisms, but we're different species. The outcome is always different for a woman than it is a man. I can't say always, but a lot of the times, yes. Because one thing I, I know about men, 
men don't get emotionally attached women do right so some women you don't want that attachment because that attachment is crazy so you just have to know who you're dealing with uh I mean, I always say the men are cheating with somebody. The women are cheating with somebody. So, you know, I don't think that women cheat less. I don't think that men cheat more. It's, you know, probably about the same. But Corliss, I, um, I think I agree with you. Really because I, I, I want to put this out there. I've never cheated. I never have. Uh, but the women I know that have, boy, they some clever people, boy. The dude, <laughs> like, most time, yeah, the men never know. You know how y'all never know? Because the women don't change up their routine. They, they, you gonna have your dinner on the table. She gonna be where she's supposed to be. She, you know, you ain't gonna know it, right? But it's men. Y'all completely do a one eighty. Stop doing everything you was doing. Stop coming home on time. You dipping off. You know, in the bathroom on the phone, and when and back in the day, they used to wear the phone, the, the, the beeper on their boxes around the house. You know that kind. Why you don't want to leave, 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 uh, lay your beeper down? What's going on? Why you got to take the phone in the bathroom? You know, but women, oh, I'm just going to the store. I'll be back. I'm going to my mama's house. You know, you know, we gonna go um, clip some coupons, and we gonna go to the store or whatever, right? But yeah, y'all men, y'all y'all sloppy, but women. He crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. Well, I'm going to disagree with you that men are sloppy. And I'm going to say, why, why is this? Because they have found right now a third of all paternity is not the father. So we, so again, the outcome is different because when women get caught, when you guys get caught, it's a lifetime mistake. Sometimes. Sometimes a third, a third of all paternity, the father is not the father now, and they're finding that through. And that's why women are fighting so hard to stop mandatory DNA testing around the United States. But the I, I, part that too, go ahead. I, I believe they. I, I, I'm just telling you, not from my personal experience, but I have somebody that is very close to me, very very close. Okay, and I almost want to say, boy, bye. And I've said it out loud, like for real. We talking about exchanging money every month. Just, you know, and I'm just like, uh, you need to do a swab, some blood. You can look at them and tell there ain't no kin. None. At all. But because you don't want to ruffle no feathers, you're going to keep on Shit, I, I honey, that that cheese would have been a grilled cheese. That would have been stopped. Black America says, Miss D, men know they just don't say anything in uh, fear of being alone or losing their stuff. Um, no. Yeah, I agree. I think I think a lot of men don't know because, as I said, I, I know some women who are. Boy, I tell you, I was working, exactly. uh, when I was at work at Frito Lay. I learned a lot of stuff at Frito Lay, boy. <laughs> At the factories, that's where they really be cheating, right? Because they be having these work husbands and wives and stuff. There was this one girl, she was so cold. Her uh, man worked at Frito Lay and her boyfriend worked at Frito Lay. Her husband worked on the second shift and her boo thing worked on the first shift with her. And, you know, she'd be cupcaking with her boo thing on first shift. When her man come in on second, she, hey, honey, how you doing? The, you know, this, he, he never knew. Everybody else knew. I was like, damn. I see what's yeah, she ain't switched up. She ain't giving him the reason to think, you know, anything going on. And right there at the same uh, factory, under the same roof. Look, I'm going to make y'all laugh. So today I'm going through, you know how memories pop up on your phone? <laughs> Woo! It said, tap if you want to uncover. Oh Lord! No, yeah. was you it know, that? Was it? Yes, it was. <laughs> I, I ain't never forgave you for that. I ain't never forgive you for that. Not, not just that one, but the other one too. In the, in the club, <laughs> I'm never gonna forgive you. When I say, "Ooh, but I'm never gonna forgive you for that one," never. See? Some things people just should not keep when they know that they doing wrong, Donovan. 
Cause see, when you got um Inspector Gadget over here, oh, I'm gonna find out. And don't think just because your face, because as soon as you go to sleep, guess what I'm gonna do? Right, right. But you gotta, you gotta remember the internet is forever. Once you put it on there, it's never coming down. <laughs> Look, I didn't intend for it to. That's why I put it up. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Donovan, you said, uh, and, I, and I'm looking at you guys' comments. I'm, a, oh, I'm scared to open up the link. Lord have mercy. But you said, you know, basically women who cheat, you know, uh, they, I guess, pay a heavier price for it. But, you know, there's a lot of men out there who cheated and, and, and started babies outside of their relationships, too. You right. know, it's never, it's never a, a, a great feeling. When your wife be like, ring, ring, hello, you mother, I got some, some uh, uh, the mail came from the child support office, talking about you done father the baby, what the, yeah, that, that that's not a good conversation. Yeah, so don't well, lie, well, huh? well, yeah, when y'all out there creeping, sometimes you, you get babies and, you know. Yeah, but the <laughs> thing is, men are always held accountable. We're always held accountable. How are women not held accountable? Because I keep hearing that. How are women not well, held think accountable? About it. With, with the ways that the laws are, an example, and I know you're going to come back with, well, the men make the laws, whatever. No, not, not necessarily whatever the deal is. Because here's my problem with the way the laws are. I don't think a side chick should have the same rights as a wife. I don't believe, and that's one of the problems, because now there's no difference between the two, right? So they're giving these rights to the side chick as if she was married. And, and the reason why uh, men are always held accountable is because at the end of the day, again, these laws were made because these guys were making uh, side chicks and families on the side and then leaving their wives for the younger model and the wife left as destitute. I'm all for the men uh, taking care of their responsibilities. But there are thousands of cases where women are have found out that the guy is not the father but he is still being held to the accountability of supporting the child because that's what's best for the child. Even though DNA has exonerated him and says he's not the guy, but because he's been paying child support for so many years or whatever the law is, he can still pay it. And everybody knows that, that that's not fair. But yet they say that is what is in the best interest of the child, that, you, that the man continues to pay. Well, and before I give it to you, Corliss and Tiger, how you doing? You're absolutely right. A side chick doesn't have the same rights as a wife to children do. And that side chick cannot be a side chick if the man didn't make her that. The side chick only becomes that when he steps outside of his relationship, messing with her raw and putting a baby up in her. You're going to assume there's responsibility of doing that. You know, if you make a baby, you should pay for it. Now, yes, there are some cases where men, I would say a lot of cases, are on the hook for a baby that's not theirs. But that's why they always tell you, be sure before you put your dipstick in, huh? Raw, especially, and no contraception is a hundred percent. The only thing that's a hundred percent is uh abstaining Absolutely. from doing that, right? So, if you do that and it is a, a possibility that it's yours, then yeah, you're gonna pay for it. And the other thing, too, is that's why if you dipping up off in these women that's not your wife or somebody you can't see spending your 24 years because in some cases, right, you got to pay all the way through college then don't sleep with them or, re or research the laws. Okay, I want to sleep with Big Booty Susie in Connecticut. What are the laws? If she gets pregnant and the baby is not mine, am I going to be on the hook for said baby? But see, that's it could all really be so simple. But unfortunately, a lot of men do the thinking with the little head and not the big head and then want to complain on the back end where you can just zip your pants up or don't unzip them in the first place and say, no, nah, I'm good. No, and I agree with you. But again, this is about accountability. Men are always held accountable for what we do. Unlike women, a lot of women. No, you're not. Wait, you're wait, not wait, 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 wait. A lot of women, they, okay, you, you make a mistake, you have a baby, and then they're in there again, and they have another baby, and they have another baby. They're, they're never held to the accountability. A man can have a bunch of kids, and then he, he goes to jail because he's not supporting them. But a woman could have a bunch of kids, and she ain't supporting them either. The state is. And she's never held accountable. But the man is. What's that story? That guy in Tennessee, he had 30 children. And they I think they ended up locking him up. But the fact that he had to, he got to have 30 children before he did it. So that one thing is that says that the women um, are a little bit uh silly, but why would a man want to put 30 babies in women he ain't with? Again, and he was held accountable. At the end of the day, he was held accountable. At the end of 30 children, he was held accountable. 
women so are never to, women are I, never held accountable. Not, that's a that's a lie. Never held accountable. You're dealing never. with the absolutes. That is not true. Women are that, that women are not never held accountable. Knock it off, Corliss. Most women are not held accountable. So let me let me give you a, a story of someone that's close to me because this is my aunt, right? She had her son. This is the crazy thing. So, um, the father, whatever, wanted the son to come stay with him, right? She allowed him to. That was their agreement. The the father wasn't even raising the kid. She got a call from a, a whole nother woman that the man was messing with, her baby daddy, another woman. The grandmother called her and said, hey, you need to come and get your, your son because he lives over here with this other woman. So how do you go get your son to live with you? But you ain't raising him. You over here and marry somebody else. This is a real life story. Marry somebody else. They in a whole nother relationship. His son over here with the ex, right? So now you get a phone call to come and pick your son up. She goes and gets him. Brings him out here to Texas many years ago, okay? Because she filed for child support in Texas. Do you know this Negro filed in, in the state of St. Louis? And wind up because he had connections in the court. He got the baby. He got the, the boy. He's a teenager by now, right? He gets them. She has to bring them from across state lines back to St. Louis to give them to the daddy. Then they put her on child support for the time that she had her. I said, what kind of foolishness is that? Well, Demetra had to pay some child support. They held her accountable. So I was glad and, and, about that. And that's why I always say, and they, I was ordered to pay it, but I didn't pay it. Um, but deadbeat, deadbeat, right here. I, I wasn't a deadbeat because my daughter has never not been with me. I was never an absentee parent. Let's just get that straight. I was ordered to pay twice, and I didn't. Well, once they garnished my wages, um, and then I fought them for two years. And guess what? They gave it all back to me minus fifty dollars for an administrator fee. But that's why well, I say it helps when the FOI is down. They're putting pressure. <laughs> uh, but that's why I always say that's not true. I know quite a few women who are paying child support. You know, whatever. Now, is it more men paying child support? Probably. But to say that women aren't held accountable, and I also said, saw somebody say, which is true, the women is being held accountable because she has to take care of the child. And like somebody else said, yeah, you paying money, but try taking care of that child 24-7, and you sending a check every two weeks or once a month, you're not doing the heavy lifting. But I do agree it takes money and you know, presence to raise a child, but to discount the woman is not being held accountable. Hell, the minute she conceived that baby, she has it and she takes on the duty of raising that child from the cradle outside of the house. That's called being accountable. Right. Okay. I'll give you another scenario. Why is it that a woman can get pregnant, go to a fire station, leave the child and she can walk away, right? A man who gives, and there's been stories of this, is that a sperm bank, gave sperm or whatever at a sperm bank, to a lesbian couple, and then the lesbian couple break up. She goes back and asks for child support on the guy. I don't know how she got the name, or whatever. There was that, that was an actual story, and he was held accountable to pay child support. Now I ain't ever heard nothing like that. I don't have any that was intel. An on, story, yeah. I don't have any intel on. Yeah, but, see, but, but, but my point is, in general, men are always held accountable. No matter what we do, we are held accountable. Is that when you say that, that story is an anomaly or is that the norm? It's well, the thing is, I think if I remember correctly, in that scenario, they weren't supposed to give the, the women information on the fathers that donate oh, whatever and something normal. had happened. Yeah, where she had pressured or she knew somebody that worked there, whatever it was. And they went back after him for child support when he was supposed to be able to walk away. Well, that's not normal, right? Would you say that most men who donate to those banks aren't, that's not the normal situation? That's yeah, not the norm. But but the point is, we know that that woman knew the job was dangerous when she took it, but yet this man was held responsible for something that he, he had something to do with, but he didn't have nothing to do with. Well, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I don't have any intel on that, but yeah, you might want to get some uh, information as to whether somebody uh, can come back and, and do that. Again, that's not the norm. 
But yeah, um, women are held accountable too. You know, we talk about degrees or uh, the what accountability. Yeah, everybody's held accountable. I know I was held accountable. I, I laid down and had my child. I was held accountable to raising her. And I, I did that, right? But that's accountability that you, you're supposed to be doing. Nobody had to make me be accountable. But a lot of times when people, men or women, are put on child support, they have to be made to be accountable when they uh, garnish your wages. It's like I was saying with me uh, having to pay child support, it was a lie from the pit of hell that I was uh, absentee. I've never been absentee a day in my daughter's life. First time they garnished my wages, they gave it all back to me, like I said. Second time with the court, you know, and uh, he said, I don't have no job. And the judge was like, well, he don't have no job. What do you want him to do? So they ordered me to pay. I did not pay. My daddy said, let me know if he collect one dime. It'll be the last one he collect. So I did not pay him at all, you know. So when I hear that, oh, it's men, 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 oh, it's, it's women too. Now, I don't have a problem taking care of my daughter, but I've, my, I've never not taken care of my daughter. My daughter has been with me all her life, most of her life. Now, her dad, you know, took care of her as well, but she was never outside of the care of me, her mother. So, no, I was not going to pay for something when I was already paying for 100% of everything. So, I know that um, it, uh, it unfairly happens to men, but it also unfairly happens to women as well. So, the, and I agree that there, there does need to be um, an overhaul of the system in, uh, in regards to child support. There's some people who have been uh, forced to pay a whole lot of money. There's some that's not paying any at all. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's not just the men. So uh, let's see here. Get to the comments. Uh, and Tam, I, but see, they don't want to have that conversation because I always ask that. Who make the laws? It's men. But that's going to, you know, more threads. How you doing? Says, hey, y'all, I'm a little uh, behind today. What's the ch uh, chosen topic? We just talk about everything right now. The average logical thing says, wow, but that's one story down. I mean, yeah, that's not the norm. You know, person get, donating some stuff and then the, the, the people suing for child support is like, that, I don't know. Quita says, G uh, just uh, giving their kids away for money. Yeah, some dudes do that. Like, I'm broke, right? Uh, so a lot of dudes got a lot of kids running around here, but they could do that. I uh, thank you, Miss Sweet Talk. She says great discussion. And uh, Puppy says, I have heard of those stories like that too, but are, are they the norm? No. I'm not saying that they don't exist, but is that the thing? Because if that come on now, if that was the norm, it wouldn't be not a piece of sperm left in no sperm bank because dudes wouldn't be doing it. And that's just a fact. Uh Quincy says, sounds like the police after shooting an unarmed black man. We don't have all the facts. Um, I don't know what that means. Let's see here. The average logical thing is that did y'all watch the meeting with RFK and uh, Killer Mike? I had a secondhand embarrassment. No, I did not watch that. Um, I guess I probably I need to. Puppy says Pan. I'll say talking to Michael. Uh, and King David, the one how you doing says, are guests able to call in? Um, you are. All I ask is that I, if I have not seen you on here before, show me your face before I bring you up. Also, um, if you have nothing pertinent to add to the conversation, you know, please abstain from doing that. But right now we're just kind of um, having an open uh, topic. So give me a second and I'll share the link. Uh, yeah, Brina, they're not the norm. Yes, I'm gonna pin the link right now. Uh, yeah, average logical thinker. Thank you for um, reminding me that. So, yeah, uh, that uh, donation story, if you will, is not the norm, but uh, everybody is held accountable. But like I said, you know, I think there's a lot of mamas out there, but like, shoot, okay, you take the child, I'll pay you $50 a week. I take garnish my check for fifty dollars a week, and yeah, you go off and raise the child. It, you know, since you you, you talk about you not, I, I, I'm not being held accountable. It, it, give it your best shot. I guarantee you, you uh, you happily trade that fifty dollars a week uh, and give that child back to the mama. So I get it. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna share the link. Go go ahead, Corliss. Well, I bless my kids, father. I, I didn't put them on child support for what you're gonna lose your license you ain't gonna get a job you ain't gonna either you gonna help or you ain't and i ain't need the white folks to make them help because once you put them in there majority of them uh well i won't say the majority i take that back take that back one he quit so i just relieved him you wasn't doing nothing no way so hey it was what it was I had seven. I did it. So seven, one, daddy helped, and that's what it was. Yeah, and there's some women who um, 
do not put their uh, child's father on uh, child support. I was one of them. In fact, the last time we went back to court, uh, the judge looked at the case and said, oh, no, you owe her child support. Oh, he, he was like Rumpelstiltskin spinning around. Ah! But I never collected it, you know, because I was making more money. My thing is just take care of your daughter when you're supposed to do that. Leave me alone. Don't cause me no problems. And we good. We good, you know, um, because I, too, believe if you are making more money or whatever, the father is struggling. OK, you don't need to rate the brother over the coals. However, I do not think that you should be out there not doing anything. And I'm not saying that that's what it is, but I'm saying I don't think you should be out there not doing anything. Talking about I got hard times. Or you got to understand you. Well, who gonna understand if I don't keep a roof over these uh, over this child's head, put food on the table, make sure it's got clothes. Nobody understanding my situation, but I'm supposed to understand you. You trying? You send it twenty dollars, ten five, so a bag of groceries, something, something. But you can't just be out there as a fully grown man making children. Talking about I'm on hard times. Well, who the hell ain't? Everybody on hard times. Right. Agreed. 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 I put in the uh, chat a uh, the article that I was that I referenced a little bit. So if you guys want to click that chat, if you don't think it's uh, real or I just made something up, there was actual cases going around where that actually happened. But this is about accountability, not child support. So again, uh, everybody's held to accountability. But again, I I personally believe women are not held to the same standard of accountability as men men are held, and that's just me. Brittany says, I heard of kids searching for the siblings and sometimes the donor father, but kids want to know and the donor should know he's taking that risk. Yeah. And, and I'm hoping that they tell them that, hey, is a possibility that the uh, child or whatever uh, come looking for you. If I was a man, I wouldn't be doing it. Then, of course, then there'd be a lot of women out there or, or couples looking to have a baby wouldn't be able to do that. So it's, it's just kind of a catch 22. You know, Tam said, isn't it the goal uh, to make? As much money as you can to take care of your family. I would think so, right? Potent pondering. How you doing? Enlightening says, I would rather see uh, the man in jail than out on the street and not taking care of your child. You're saying you would rather see that? Or is that you're saying, is that, um, you know, what people think? I, I, and forgive me for our misunderstanding your comment. Oh, Puffy, you finally agree with me or something. I don't know what it is, but all right now. <laughs> yeah, I was about to go think it says I had several men encourage me to file and I did and he's paying and we're grateful. Yeah. Um, if that's, and unfortunately the child support system is there because there are some men who won't pay. You know, as we know, men, hell, y'all could cre create a copious amount of children a day if you was, you know, having uh, relations with different women through every day, all day. Y'all could do that, right? There's no limit to the amount of children you can have. So with that being said, there's some men out there that just have a bunch of children. It's like, I ain't going. I ain't taking care of the child, you know? Um, but here, here's the funny thing about that, though. When they when they reinvented the uh, child support laws, notice that our parents' generation and our grandparents' generation exempted themselves from back child support. Because how many of us in our generation, and you remember that, Demetri, we had friends that, the dad wasn't there, you know, he's in the streets or whatever the deal is. So it ain't like it's something that start, started with our generation. But notice that the baby boomers and the silent generation exempted themselves from the very laws, because there's a lot of us that were raised without our parents that are running around here in our generation, but they exempted themselves. Notice that. Yeah, you know, and I would, I don't know, you know, but when, before child support laws came into existence, yeah, I'm sure it was the same things were going on but you know then the child support laws came in because for one i guess the state um is tired of taking care of uh children i don't know right but again uh and i know there's some women that no matter what the man does he's a good dude he wants to pay she gonna put him on child support regardless but then i would think there's a lot of women and men who are like nah you are shirking your responsibility financially taking care of these children and i'm gonna put the man on you I'll put the you know pay man in your life so that you pay me something. Yeah. And then again, when the um, the crime bill was done in 1995, guess who signed the new child support law? I believe the new child support law actually hit in 1996. And it was written under the same, basically the same foundation as the crime bill. It incentivizes states to go after fathers or uh, parents who are not the custodial and the federal government will match for every dollar that they, they recover. 
it's almost uh, the same foundation of that, that, that gives them the incentive to go after uh, that money. And the federal government gives them a portion of what they recover. You say you're talking about as far as child support collecting. Collecting, collecting yeah. Yeah. Uh, Quincy says it's the uh, it's the women sleeping with 30% of the men, but don't women, especially in our community, outnumber the men? So, you know, I hear that a lot. Oh, there's 30 percent. The women are women sleeping with a small percent of men. It's like, well, it's more women than men in our community. So why don't we ever have that conversation? Are we just interested in just, you know, not necessarily about saying this about you, Quincy, just spewing off stuff we read on the internet, but we don't plug in the other factors to that. Because that's like saying, oh, the other 70 percent of brothers, they just ain't sleeping around. They ain't having sex with nobody. It's like, knock it off. Michael? The 70 percent of us are responsible with our tally whackers and we're covering up and whatever else. So, yes, the 70 percent of us, we are the responsible ones. Yes, that's 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 pretty good. I'm going to let you tell that lie on the Lord's Day. Michael, what's on your mind? How you doing? Hi, Dimitri and Donovan. Hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. How you guys doing? We're doing well. How about yourself? Um, okay, sorry for the co the controversial statement two weeks ago. So just wanted to Oh man, um, we have forgot all about that. Okay, just want to make sure we're clear. Okay. I'm gonna read it just very quickly. Um in the comments I created a contract. It's very specific to a black agenda. It's about 13 items, and I just bought it from a, 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 a YouTube channel called Sabi Sabs. It's a veteran who's on the soul and create a contract. I'm sure Donovan received my email, but I'll go very specific quickly. So if both okay, parties- oh, don't, don't, We don't need all 13 points. Just give us the highlight. Okay. I'll do my best to summarize. Nah, you don't do better than that, brother. Okay. I'll summarize. Give, okay. Give the right. highlights. <laughs> okay, here's the highlights. Okay. But I'll definitely email to you so you could take a look as well. Okay. okay. That's fine. So I said, if both parties care about cash payment reparations for foundational Black American uh, the sense of slavery, F.E.O. Adels. Please adhere to the following uh, terms of the contract. Failure to issue cash payment reparations. Uh, donations to be returned to voters between 20% and 50%. Uh, no lip service. If they sell out their constituents, both parties need to be challenged. Uh, both parties need to pay volunteers at least $2,000 for canvassing, text banking, and phone banking. Uh, must cut the check within 30 days after being elected to Congress. Uh, the IRS will electronically deposit checks to FBO Ado's uh, bank account, and politicians must donate 60 percent of their of their checks to Black Americans. And qualify immunity within 14 days. Pass anti-Black hate crime bill for Black people. Pay prisoners at least 30 percent of lost wages before being released from prison time. Records need to be expunged immediately before. Releasing prisoners. So my, that, that, that sounds like you're giving, giving 13 points. And I asked you. Sorry, I, I was just summarizing. And then I said at the end, uh, please sign at the dotted line below a contract. Because every day we sign contracts at work when we do business. Gotcha. So that way it's going to hold politicians, you know, accountable be between today and tomorrow. So something has to start if you want to move the train forward. Thank you. Okay, Thank Michael, you. I'm, I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer this thing real quick. Sure. Okay. Here's the thing you got to understand. The president has been told by the Supreme Court to do certain things, right? Right. When Donald, when Donald Trump was in office, he is the executive of the laws. He executes the laws, right? Correct. Why is it that some presidents can say, I'm just going to ignore what the Supreme Court says? The Supreme Court has no power to enforce what it is that they decree. It's up to the president to do it. And that's where the crux is. We can write a contract uh, all day, the Republicans did it in the 90s, the contract with America. How many of right. us are remember, remember that? that? And and when it came down to it, did they uphold the contract with America? No, they didn't. There's no way to enforce it. Right. But you say, but I'll, add, but I'll say this, but at least one of them got out of the office after like signing a contract and not keeping their promise. At least it's it's a way to keep them, to be to hold them accountable, uh, to monitor how they vote and what they vote for. All right. Well, thank you so much, Michael, for coming up here and saying that once again. We appreciate you. Please yeah, you come are. back and see us again. Anytime. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Black America, what's on your mind today and how you doing? Good afternoon. How you doing? You, you ready to get jiggy next week? 
Uh, actually, ready to get jiggy out actually, here. Actually, it's the week after that. I got a week ahead of myself, so I'm a week ahead. That's, right. oh, that's okay. why she's got the hair and she's getting it all ready to that's go. Good. Step yeah. for wild. That's good. That's good because it's it's raining out here today. Well, it, I mean it's it's cloudy. It, it's not raining. Uh, I. Hello, how's everybody doing? Good afternoon. I just wanted to say a uh, shout out to Corliss again. Come up here dropping bombs on these heifers. I, I don't believe all heifers either, uh, Corliss. But I had to say something because, uh, Miss D, I don't think you understand what Donovan means by like a small percentage of men being able to bed all the women and have all these kids. So you were saying something about 30%. It, it starts to be this dude with the 30 kids or whatever. Now that's ridiculous, right? I, I mean, I don't know what he was doing or how he was taking care of his kids. But I know that in the 80s and the 90s, I mean, it was brothers, especially brothers that was in the street. They was doing that because, you know, we didn't know if we was going to be alive the next hour or the next day. So so that's why a lot of brothers was living like that. Doesn't make any excuse for it now, but it's still the same thing now. Women will have sex with a small group of men that they deem, uh, what do you call it, Donovan Sexy or whatever? Uh, hammers, y'all used to call them hammers. My, my big sister used to call them hammers back in the day. You know what I'm talking about, Miss D. Oh, he a hammer. You, you know what I mean? So that that's that's what it is. It's just a Donovan ain't knocking down nothing. You know, you you gotta have you gotta have a, a man that most women are attracted to. Okay. That was painless, huh? Okay. It's some I'm, real I mean, look, 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 Black America. It's some real unattractive hammers too. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Don't start, Corliss. Don't start. <laughs> you, you, you are so nasty. All right. Um, I, I, I did, I didn't know that there could be unattractive hammers though. But um, yeah. So, you know, I, I thought that that was for the good-looking guys because Demetra is about my sister age. I don't know nothing about these hammers you talking about at all. That's, that's a new term to me. You, you never heard that term? No, because I was not there looking for no hammers that everybody else was using, okay? <laughs> D, D, my hammer was exclusive for a while. Did he? How long? <laughs> she uh, is so I nasty. I have I have four children by the hammer, okay? <laughs> right. So. King David, how you doing? Uh first time. Glad to see you here. Oops, let me unmute you. There you go. What's on your mind? Um, black and highly favored. How's how's my family doing? We're doing fabulous. Good. Yeah, this this actually is my first time. This might be my um this might be, might be my second. For real? Okay, then it must have been a long time or a while. Yeah, yeah, okay. no doubt. Got you. So what's up? Okay. Give me one second. Sure. Uh, all right, can you still hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay, so sorry about that, because like I had the uh the 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 youtube live stream in one channel that i'm backstage in another one so I, it was like overlaying oh, yeah. each other i'm just going crazy but okay anyway um no so in in light of the uh the, the the topic when um my brother donovan said it says that um it's it's a small number of you know hammers in the community impregnating a lot a lot of women one of the things that bears witness to that um is one of the latest um episodes of ayana uh fix my life did y'all just see that it was um it was one brother his name his name began with a j anyway uh you can find it it's, it's on youtube uh he he had like impregnated like 
28, like, like 11 I know what you're talking about. Yeah, this was years ago, and it was like he had like 30 some children. Yeah, you know, oh, and then. Here. Yeah, it was it was a it was like on it was like a three part series or something. And some some part of the series, um, they were all in like the um in like a studio with a large stu studio audience or whatnot. Then it was like four five other brothers that they didn't have as many um baby mamas or children as he did, but they still had a lot, you know. And it was like um getting back down to the entire reasoning of it all, and is you know like many of the um degenerate practices that we engage in now it all goes back to the plantation and she even said she 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 said this to all of their faces she said you are not a slave producing more children for the slave master you know you are not not a stud horse you know to to be uh, to be doing that and you know she she went and got got deeper on that subject but um and i also want wanted to say firstly I always in, in, enjoy enjoy the conversation. That's why I can't I can't wait to wait to hop on. I love love seeing y'all, you know, kicking it the way we ought to be kicking it, kicking that real talk. Um, but it kind of uh reminded me of something that just ever so slightly reminded me of something that I thought we we stomped out last year, which was you know the uh the the gender war, right? You know, like be to talking about like who's held accountable more between men and women. It started like slightly trading on that. And I was like, eh, eh. But um, no, I do think that we have, for the most part, for the most part, kind of kind of stomped that piece out. You know, um, I, I see I see it. I'm not saying that 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 this was one of the circumstances, but I'm talking about like on social media. I see it kind of surfacing. A little bit here and there and i'll be attacking it every time i <laughs> i see I, I anytime i see somebody posting something like it's 30 dollars enough for lunch i troll them i troll the hell out of the post like man i ain't even try to hear that shit <laughs> excuse part of my part of my american english but <laughs> yeah um no i agree with you um i i think it is starting to uh go away a little bit uh it seems like for the last couple of years the gender wars especially in the black community it was just horrible, right? It was all over the place. Of course, mm -hmm. we uh, more than likely know there are some other uh, esoteric things at play, like agents, you know, them folks, a lot of times they'll put things into our community and say, okay, fight over that. All the and, time. You know, yeah, we take the bait. So um, I I'm glad that it is starting to die down a little bit, although it does rear its ugly head um, every once in a while. But I think what helps too is uh, Black people saying, hey, you know, black woman, black man, we need each other. Let's cut all that nonsense out because we cannot build a nation without each other. It, it's just mm -hmm. not going to happen. So, um, but I, I, I'm too, I am too glad that it's, uh, it seems like it's remnants here and there, but not like it was. Yeah, no doubt. Um, la last thing before I go, um, yeah. are y'all, are y'all privy to, uh, to reading the she's new documentary he got coming out the uh, microphone check talking about the origins of hip hop. Mm -mm. Oh, oh my, my goodness! Oh my god! Because I don't know if you've uh, uh, been 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 catching this, but there's been kind of a uh, a cultural attack on the uh, on the genre of hip hop as far as uh, you know who originated it and you know where did it you know like really start at and stuff. And it's been like a, a like a lot a lot of Latinos, uh, Fat Joe being a prime example, saying silly stuff like blacks and Latinos created hip hop 50-50. He said that on some BET award show and walked off. Nobody ever explained it anything like that. It's this cat named uh, uh, Joe Cologne, Dr. Dr. Joe Cologne. He's been running around uh, repeating that stuff. Um, he's recently got into a debate with this guy named uh, Truth Savior. And, and dude, he, he's he's an FBA. He spanked him on <laughs> who, uh, who really originated it. But reason why something like that is so, so important is because if you can – Whatever happens to somebody's culture, that's what happens to that people. Well, and I agree with you. So I have not, I, I've heard of the documentary, but I have not watched it, obviously. And I've also uh, seen It's not it. out yet. Oh, okay. That's why yeah, I was yeah. mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I've, I've seen and heard a lot of discourse between uh, Black Americans and everybody else in regards to who has created hip hop. 
I, I think it's no doubt that black people have created it, but I think the conversation really should be who controls it. We mm -hmm. don't own hip hop. Yeah, it's ours, but ownership means that you have control of the masters and you know how it goes and how it's dictated. We know them folks have always had control over it. And so um, just like with the Communist Manifesto that was um, written so many years ago, it tells us that the powers that be, the bourgeoisie, I wasn't trying to rhyme, uh, bourgeoisie, the ones that own the means of production, they keep us, the proletariat, busy with politics, race, who mm -hmm. owns hip hop. The mm -hmm. women don't like the men while they're moving the money at the top, right? So yeah. we can have that argument about who owns hip hop, who created hip hop all day long. But as long as we ain't controlling that bank account, that uh, of the billions, I would imagine, of dollars that hip hop uh, generate every year, then mm -hmm. we're just having a conversation. The, you know, it's, and the other thing, too, is we as black people, we get mad at everybody else, but we should really be mad at ourselves because we don't gatekeep anything. We invite everybody to the cookout. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. Let a white woman get on, on TikTok and do a dance to some black music. Oh, look at her. Oh, she coming to the cookout. She bringing the raisins and the potato salad. And all right, right. Other stuff. instead of saying I ran as a white woman dance and we were black people been dancing and doing it well for all this time, but let one of them do something just a tad bit mediocre. We're snatching our wigs off and all kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So as long as we are, uh, we don't own and control anything. And Dr. Claude Anderson has talked about it far kind, Elijah Muhammad, uh, Marcus Garvey. This is not a new idea, but as long mm -hmm. as we don't control anything, we just bumping our gums. Right. When, when we tell them folks, nah, keep your sexy reds and cardies and all the drill rap, and we, we don't want none of that. And, you know, we writing checks and see, they can give us a 50 uh, year anniversary hip hop celebration, but with, what did that? I can't remember who it was. They asked, but what did that do for black people? I think it was Dr. Umar who said that. Yeah, so there yeah. was did mm -hmm. black people get enriched because of that. Oh, look mm -hmm. at all the money that black people, not even the artists, but black people have supported hip hop and all of that. I mean, hell, hip hop is my generation, you know. Mm -hmm. So yep. when I hear you know the younger people talking about I'm like what you talking about, that started with our generation, you know. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of money that has gone into the uh, hip hop. Yeah. Well, how much of that do we have as black people? Exactly. Got, those people were rich, though, Miss D. Those, Ooh. those rappers, what Run happened? DMC, Run DMC, okay, LL wait, Cool wait, J, wait, uh, wait, Big wait, Daddy wait. K. Okay, wait a minute. We're talking about a very small amount, but I know that I think it's Nas and a couple of other people have created foundations so that they can help black artists like. And rock him and all that they have given them money and said our greats our pioneers who started this rap stuff should not be running around here broke without teeth mc shan he was he oh, just oh, hold on to, wait, wait, no 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 hold on hold on i got something very important to say hold on wait, hold on, on. Oh, rock kill is but one of, okay let me listen give, give me a second okay the point that i'm making is are legends now i would imagine rakim is not broke but as one of the founders the very early you know on and rakim to me is one of the greatest ever do it he should be well he should be a, as wealthy as them folks that's controlling hip-hop but he is not so we also know that there are some people you, i guess you can maybe call them the gatekeepers not all of them but some you know that are wealthy but what about the rest of them you got white people um, uh Men and women getting into hip hop, they've been in there two weeks and they wealthy all of a sudden. They, you know, got all this say so. They invited to the picnics and getting all these Grammys and stuff. Those are the people that's that's benefiting. So, as I said, as, as long as we don't own and control hip hop, we just argue it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what you got to say, Black America? You there? He's on mute. But you are always you're always going to have somebody at the bottom. You're always going to have somebody at the top. Okay, I I totally agree with that. But again, what we arguing about? Something we don't control for. We don't have any control over hip hop at all. It's just it's arguing. It's arguing. Like I said, let's start gatekeeping. Let's start keeping what's ours. Ours. Yeah, there's been Latinos, Puerto Ricans, whatever. They they you cannot have the conversation about hip hop without them. They are very, they have done, uh, contributed a lot to that. I mean, you can't have the conversation about hip hop without the Beastie Boys and they Jews. 
You know, they were some of what some people could say the and are uh, pioneers of hip hop. It's just a fact. But hip hop belongs to black people. Period. But we don't gatekeep and we've given it over to everybody else. And now we get the celebrations. The white so, so country western. Country Western belongs to white people. Why is no, Beyonce on their side of the no, fence? No, that, but no, that, that, but see, that's what you're saying. That's what it sounds like to me. Like real talk, that's what it sounds like to me. Hip hop belongs to to black people. It's music. Country Western is music. Jazz, tap, ballet. I don't care what. It doesn't belong to anybody. Once you put something out there. It belongs to everybody. Eminem, no, 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 and hell no. No. And I'm gonna say, say no because of this, right? Um, first of all, beats, all of that stuff did not come from no white folks. When you seeing white folks anywhere playing anything, that's just like about for me, it's just like them taking over the patents for brooms and all the stuff that they know they didn't create. Why would you need a broom when you ain't sweeping no damn floor? That's the thing. We give mm. them everything and they don't deserve nothing because they take everything. When they when you go back and you read and you research, a lot of music, especially country, that didn't come from white folks. That was so I, I understand. Them. I, I understand that, but who 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 is the main characters in country? I understand the banjo was uh, made in Africa and brung over here and talked to a white person, but who dabbles in it? You see what I mean? So that's where that's where you start getting kind of stick. Dabble first. Go research. First. It, 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 so 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 it, it's it's also could say that black folks trafficked in slaves first we did a lot of things first because we've been here long black america but when, I, I, you you trolling no. now you troll you trolling well, now I, I, i'm not trolling you cannot say I, that I, something you know wait, wait hold on and i'm gonna say some of y'all have asked me is black america really black i've seen black america he is black this is a black man this ain't if i've never seen black america i'd be like yeah he probably you know one of them folks but no this is a black man I just, just, just so we're clear. He's I, I, I was black. No, I'm just saying. Once you put something out into the into the ether, once you put something out into the system, it does not belong to someone in particular. You know, it's it's like so why do, how the so Indians. Stop right there. Stop right there, Black America. So why do people put patents out? So once you put something out in the universe, right, and you patent it, that belongs to you. Some of us at, at that time did not know how. But that's why they came out with the um, a poor man's patent where you mail something to yourself, you never open it, and then you can prove I, I that know. it is yours. Right? right. Certified. So, yep, no, I got I'm you. But the whole thing about it is the, the whole thing about it is the whole thing about it is who has a patent on rap? You see what I mean? How are you going to patent a whole genre of music? It, it, to me, I, I don't know. It, it just doesn't seem fair to patent something that everybody uses. Everybody uses it. I understand that you're upset that black people don't make most of the money off of it. I understand so, that part. So, so what you're saying is, that's like saying, well, Elon patent Tesla, and it's not fair. We should all be able what? to just go make Teslas. And you go make a Tesla and see what happened to you. Oh, okay. Okay. Because you're going to be throwing no, up on No, no. Did, did, did he patent it? Did he patent it? Okay. Let me, let me. Now, hold on a second. Okay. okay. All, right, all right. Hold on. Hold on. Because now it's getting silly season. Okay. JBWR, how you doing? It's Demetra. How would you go? How would one gatekeep hip hop? Well, we it's our talent. And I think we also need to understand that a lot of times when artists sign contracts and things like that, a lot of times it comes from a place of poverty. I don't have no money. Maybe I don't have a lawyer, a good contract lawyer to read over the contract. I believe these contract or these record companies or whatever is going to do right by me or whatever the case is. But we need to gatekeep it by realizing that it's our talent, right? Stop selling it out.
for next to nothing, giving them folks all the rights to our stuff. Because if they own the rights and they get the right to tell you what to do, how to do it and all of that. And the other thing is black America, you saying, you know, uh, it's not fair that everybody else can't have it. It's our stuff. And if these good old white folks that you like to uh, defend all the time are so great at everything, why they got to steal everything we got? Everything right. we got, they take and they make the money from it. And the cold part about it is the JBWR. The other thing is... Um, I, don't, I don't defend white people. Okay. Uh, JBWR, the other thing that we can do is to stop spending money with them to buy our own stuff back. That's like, you know, somebody steal a bike off your porch and then they roll by saying, I got bikes for sale. And you say... Oh, that look like my bike. Well, it is. I'm going to sell it back to you. You know? Well, let me just add this real quick. You guys notice that it's always, these industries always prey on the young and inexperienced and almost nothing artists. And mm -hmm. why they do that is because these young people mistake fame for wealth. They want the fame. And the companies give them the fame. You can have the fame. Oh, look, there goes so-and-so. Look, there go there, there's your fame but they never give them the wealth. And that's where the, the education of uh, how the industry works should be so important. Because when you look at our, our athletes, people like that, other than like LeBron James and people are starting to get it, where do most of these athletes, sports agents are? They're Jews. All their sports agents are Jews getting 30%, 30% of a contract. I'm, I'm doing all the work, but this guy here is getting 30% of my rookie contract. And we know, let's talk about the NFL. I'm a running back or I'm a wide receiver. I will last less than 10 years in the modern NFL. This guy has already taken 30% of my rookie contract. Done. So again, I think the problem is it happened to uh, TLC. It happened to Tony Braxton. It happens to all of these young artists that come in. They mistake fame for wealth. Yes, indeed. And uh, King David, were you going to say something? And then I'm going to give it to Keisha. Yes. Uh, so that that's gatekeeping hip hop. That's a um, that's that's part of what what uh what our dear brother Tariq is 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 doing with the uh, with the documentary, like with the with the the, the base that. Have, have been going on it's, a, it's about gatekeeping that because hip-hop is a part of history hip-hop is one of the most influential forces on the planet now and it, it is the influence us you know so if somebody can take something so powerful that we develop in, ter in terms of a culture and say that you no know, it was actually uh um you know latinos who who, who did it and even italians this article out there uh, suggesting that even Italians played a part in creating hip hop. Like that's that's something else that they're taking away from us. We can't we can't allow that to happen because again, history is important. Hip hop is a part of history. So, absolutely, Keisha, how you doing? Hi guys, how are you? We're doing well. What's on your mind? So I am so glad you guys are talking about this. I am, I really feel deeply about this because my grandfather was a Calypsonian and this is like back in the forties and the fifties and the sixties. So um, I'm from originally from the U.S. Virgin Islands. I grew up in the DMV, but I'm originally from the U.S. Virgin Islands. And back then Black artist, even though he was an American citizen, he couldn't come to the U.S. and make his um his albums. He had to go to Germany to make his albums. And what really hurts me is that we, as a people, sometimes don't understand how our artists are robbed and how their music is robbed and how their whole personas are robbed. And it's the same thing that happened to our faith. And we don't sometimes make the correlation between the two, like this world isn't different from one set of people and then another set of people, even going past race and time, people keep doing the same things over and over again. Um, we see when Vladimir Putin pulls out like black Jesus and you're like, didn't we all know that? Well, we may have known it, but other people willfully didn't want to know it. And so they had this renaissance where they did this thing called iconoclasm where you break 
a, 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 a religious image or you break a, a faith image and turn it into something else. Well, that's what literally happened to our music and that's what they're trying to do again. Hip hop is definitely a black art and we cannot allow this to keep going on. We really have to start spending our money with each other and stop worrying about being rich fast and about building the community. Because if we keep selling ourselves out and giving our really our souls away, we really can't have anything else for ourselves because we've given it to everybody else to mm -hmm. profit over. I remember when they did that PBS special on hip hop and um, like they were talking about Africa, Mombada and um, uh, what is it? Um, the Fab Five, what, uh, forgive me, I'm, I'm losing the my Furious Five. Yes, the, the Furious Five. Five. Four plus one, there's so many yeah. great yeah. Yes, there. and how they were like, no, we don't want to go to these, we don't want to sell our art to these um, white companies, let's build our own companies. And the younger artists were like, we're selling it out and we're moving on. And then they got screwed over and then they got screwed over by other black people too, who were willing to sell it out. So we really have to start, I don't know if gatekeeping is the word, but it is the same meaning. We have to start building from within and stop chasing the money and start really protecting each other. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump off now, <laughs> but I just Thank felt so you. strong about that because of what I, I know my grandfather and the people of his generation went through. Yeah. Absolutely. And thank you so much for always coming on here and being a voice of wisdom. And they said she has a lovely voice and I totally agree. And I love your hair. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, my daughter calls it birthday hair and I got a week ahead of myself. My birthday is not for like two weeks. So that's uh, all right. Girl. You know, you just you're supposed to souls. shave your head and be natural. <laughs> damn it. And I love every Ooh. iteration of your hair. So oh, let me just put you. that out. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, hon. Bye bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Yes, indeed. So I'm saying who we have up Great here. Great discussion. Oh. Great discussion. Keep it going. It is very good discussion. I'm just looking at the uh, the comments here. Brina says it's not uh, admiration either, people. These people are saying if we can't do it, then what makes you so special? Absolutely. And Jai says, cool her. Yep, one of the pioneers, if not the pioneer, right? Yeah, last time I saw him in the Erica Badu video. Remember, he was on the bus when she was getting on the bus at the end of the, mm -hmm. the song. But uh, we well, always got some great videos. Oh, yes. Oh, the um, hip hop. Love wait, of my so, life. Yeah. So somebody said Cool Hurt. Cool Hurt was the pioneer? One, um, of I, one of them. One of them. OK. OK. He was one of them. Because there, cause there, there was a there, there was an issue uh, surrounding that because um, Cool Hurt came to America when he was like, 12 years old and didn't really start getting busy DJing and stuff until he got till he got older but hip hop was already going on though it hadn't had got his name yet you know like um in 1967 there was a brother named Pygmy Markham and he got the song called Here Comes the Judge yeah he was rapping on that song before hip hop had a name he was rapping on Here Comes the Judge judge yeah no I, and I know exactly what you're talking about I just kind of, when I hear the discussion, I'm like, wow, we going to argue over the time of day at six o'clock in the afternoon too, huh? <laughs> like, we we going to argue over everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm one of those people, you know, uh, I don't really talk about it, but I have a degree in communication and mm -hmm. a, a master's in public relation. And so I'm one of those people. I'm like, I only have discussions that matter. Now, sometimes I, I have a lot of times, I guess I should say silly conversations and stuff. But when I see a conversation like this happening online, I'm like, well, who is really benefiting from all of that? We just arguing. I'm one of those mm. people like I, I spend I do spend time online because I work online, but I like to be productive um offline. So I'm wondering if we're online all the time, arguing about this, that, and the other, what are we doing to be productive for real? You know, and I know for content yeah. creators, uh, it's just I'm just not one of them. I don't make a lot of money off of social media, just being honest with y'all. Um but I know for a lot of content creators, they do keep everybody riled up and arguing back and forth and all of that. And I'm like, well, what is it for? Who's yeah. really gaining from that? Yeah. You and, know? And the, and the conversations we do have, they definitely got got to be uh, productive. They got to they got to set records straight 
and they and they, there has to be marching orders after them. Like, uh, and, and I'm not saying saying you you say you saying this, Mama, but uh, mm -hmm. when I hear uh, certain brothers and sisters of ours say stuff like, "Man, black people do too much talking. All we do is so we love talking." Whoa, 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 whoa. Man, man, white folks, these policies you ain't you ain't ever watch C-SPAN. Man, C-SPAN, they get it. They get in that 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 room and they talk for hours and hours and hours and hours about what well, they. What the white do. folks talking about, though? Right, right. That's what I'm saying about what what's the agenda moving forward. And, and what's that, that. But, but what is that agenda netting them ultimately? Oh, Keeping revenue them on top. Come on revenue now, on top. Yeah. right. So in that, because I'm glad you brought that up, and I'm not saying they don't have silly conversations. They do, but on C-SPAN, which I think is terribly boring. Sometimes they mm -hmm. talk about some things, but. You know, they talking about how to move the money, whether it's legal or illegal, that you know, whatever. Again, that mm -hmm. is uh capitalism, right? That's yep. what they do. Those people at that level, usually the one percent, they talking about moving the money, and they like Psh. let the 99 percent argue about hip hop and black and white and women. Let them argue because they don't care about that. They, all they care about is moving the money, which is why a lot of times we talk about the Democrats and the Republicans, or they, they, they care about the money, they don't care about the people. Especially here in, in in America, they don't care about people. They care about the money. So I'm not saying we should always have conversations um, that get us money, but is it going to help us move the ball? Yeah. Whether it's how we think, how we feel, like what are we getting from it? And I know originally when social media was created, it was just to have a silly conversation. Oh, I went on vacation. Look at this picture. Look at my kids. Look at my dog. But it's obviously moved past that. And so a lot of conversations we're having, I was especially saying our community are is not moving the ball. And so mm -hmm. the other question I would ask, and maybe I can um, ask this to everybody, once we wrestle, you know, the conversation of hip hop belonging to us from uh, them folks, then what? Let then them what? eat cereal. Anyway, I want to say I want to say this. Um, we're talking about country music real quick, and I'm just. You know, because there's the beehive out there, right? Everybody is so afraid of the beehive. Don't say nothing about Beyonce. Don't do nothing about Beyonce. Them white folks called Beyonce out at the Country Music Awards, and the beehive was nowhere to be found. Nowhere mm. to be found. I was so That's disappointed. That's a lie. That's a I lie. I was disappointed. That's a lie. Beehive. Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. You know, I'm not even in the beehive. I like Beyonce, and I do love her new album. But originally, when she came out with her uh, country song, uh, 16 Carriages in uh, Texas Hold'em, uh, it was a, a very popular country western station in Oklahoma wouldn't play it. Do you know the Beehive got on that ass? And they said that they had not used their Twitter account in like since 2000, I mean, uh, 2018 or something like that. And they got to that Twitter and says, oh, we got Beyonce's new record coming right up because <laughs> the Beehive clogged that doggone phone line and they played her, her they, record. They forced them. They forced them to play it, though. That doesn't mean they want to do it. But guess what? Beyonce is the first black woman to have a number one hit on the country and Western song. Uh, uh, chart. Uh, and she's probably going to get her first Grammy. Not that I care about that, but for record of the year and a whole host of other things. So you ain't going to tell me there's not power in numbers, but that beehive is unmatched. Right. Now, let me get this straight. She's nominated for the record of the year in the country music. She probably will be. Yeah. Because isn't it funny, um, and I'm not a Beyonce follower or whatever, I don't know what that all is about, but I know she's been nominated for Album of the Year several times. Has she ever won in our community in the categories of Album of the Year? I know she's won Grammys, but I know for a fact, oh, yeah. I'm, pardon yeah. me if I'm wrong, has mm -hmm. she ever won Record of the Year? She has, and like you talk about, like the uh, Essence Awards and the NAACP. No, 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 the Grammy, the Grammy. Not a Grammy, no, remember that's what Jay-Z was talking about. Yeah, no, she has never won record of the year, but she is the most Grammy uh, winning artist uh, in the history of the Grammys. So I think. Uh, so, so, yeah. So, so, D, my question would be why you think she ain't never won album of the year? Um, I, from what I've heard, and, you know, again, I'm not a Beyonceologist or nothing, that's because she doesn't predominantly. <laughs> She doesn't predominantly write her own music. She has a team of writers. And um, often a lot of the people that have one, uh, they write their own stuff. Like, remember, I think it was last year, Bonnie Raitt, who I love, you know, uh, she won. People were like, we didn't even, who was Bonnie Raitt? We never, you know, even knew she had a song. Bonnie Raitt's writing credit said, 
Bonnie Raitt. <laughs> it didn't say Bonnie Raitt in half of the phone book. Then, and, oh, you know, I no shade to Beyonce, but she has a lot of people writing her music. So I think a lot of people are like, yeah, well, if it's album of the year, which I, I guess it could be a great album. I think they kind of say the whole writing thing is the issue. So I don't know. Don't get me to lying. Uh, yeah, he says, I wonder if Taylor Swift can accomplish that. Taylor Swift has her and one other person that she's been writing with since she started on her, uh, I would say most of her music. So Taylor Swift is one that uh, pretty much writes um, all of her own music too. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm speaking about my pay grade with the Grammys and stuff. I don't even really watch them at all. Uh, I did watch them this year. I ain't gonna lie because my girl Victoria Monet uh, was nominated. And I really do love her. So I wanted to see her win. She won three. But other than that, I, I could care less, to be honest with you. Our brother Don, how you doing? He says that's what Kanye was talking about. When he clowned Taylor uh, Swift, you crazy called Taylor Slow. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but the, then again, those aren't our awards. Them, th that's their awards. Why is we as black people, we get so wrapped up into the validation that they, they give us? Do you really care? I don't care. You know, if they see me or we, we just get so happy. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Them folks, they I, I got something to say on that. Sure. All right. So the problem is that uh, we used to have the BET Awards a long time ago. I don't know if they still do it or not, I think but they I, I know. Yeah, I haven't watched one since Michael Jackson threw his hat into the crowd. What was that? BET 25 or something? It was beautiful. It was bad. You know what I'm talking about, Donovan? Um, I, I stopped watching award shows that long ago because, I mean, uh, I, I can't watch white award shows. I, I don't listen to any of that music. I can't. I And you guys are talking about Beyonce. I've never even. And and the two men are on the panel. I don't know if you guys have ever even bought a female's album. I've never bought a, a, a female album rap or I, I think I bought a Anita Baker uh, tape when I was a kid. You know, it came with my Houdini uh, friends. But, um, you know, I think what it is, is, is people are seeking they these uh, award shows gets them to sell more to different types of people. It puts their music out. You said some Janelle Fone or something. I've never even heard of that person. I, I, was gonna say, I, won't, I won't take it. Mike, I, you know what? I saw that and I meant to say something. Thank you so much for the donation. Love and appreciate you. Says artists like Lisa Fisher. Watch out. Watch out. What you know about Lisa? Uh, who sang, how can I ease the pain? I uh, believe did not want to sell themselves for continuous fame. Yeah, she was actually uh, Luther Vandross, is, uh, one of uh, his background singers. But uh, go ahead, Black America. Is that Victoria yeah, Monet? Yeah, so, oh, okay. So I've never even heard of Victoria Monet. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know who her song was or anything like that. So, you know, that's something that would be completely off of my radar. So when people get on those shows, they're basically selling themselves to a larger audience so that like Killer Mike, Killer Mike sucks. Everybody knows that Killer Mike is a horrible, supposed to be rap artist. And he's wow. been rapping for, for 30 years. And and I, he probably I probably could put out a CD that sell more albums than he's ever sold today it, so it's if it, people sell themselves to the and and guys are not going to go back to the days when we were young when too short and and people like that was selling cds out of the trunk of their car They're, they have they have to get on these distribution places that's all all right got you got you so thunder you say you buy uh women's uh records sade etta james yeah yeah I know men who uh, have purchased uh, ladies. CDs. See, see, come on, Sade. When when was the last time anybody even seen Sade? That's what I'm oh, talking now about. You, now you're moving to goalposts. No, because I, 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 said, I, said, I said I bought an Anita Baker. I said I bought an Anita Baker. Okay. I I. But I'm talking about recently. He said Etta James. Etta James ain't well, been alive for forty when years. When is, when is the last record Anita made? Ex that's my point exactly. Men do not buy, huh? Oh, well, you know what, Black America? 
Okay. No, I'm serious. Donna, Donovan is co-signing for me. We don't buy women music. Okay. And maybe a long time ago, yeah, but he's not riding around bumping no Cardi B. I, wait a minute. Nobody buying no music because you can stream it now. So what are we talking about? Mike says I bought SWV albums. Cut close. Uh, Mesa, what you what you know about Mesa? Says uh, Anita Baker, Vesta Williams, Shaka Khan, Lisa Stanfield. Oh, they gonna be out. They gonna be out here next week too, Miss D. If you want to go to that concert too, you want to go to that concert? SWV. SWV total. Uh, SWV total seven oh two. Okay. It's like it's escape. Yep, all of those groups. I, yeah, sure. I would love to. Said <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Black America, you be wilding. Uh, mm -hmm. So anyway, let's see here. Brene says we don't have radios like we used to. Once I got serious XM, I started uh, some uh, good music being made today. There are some good artists out there. Yeah. Uh, how many of y'all know who Masego is? Yeah, I, I, you're welcome. You're welcome. Google Masego. Theo Croker. You know, how many of y'all know who he is? You're welcome. I'm putting you on to some good music. See, see, you listen to that. You listen to that. What is it? Neo soul? What genre is it? Um, Theo Croker is definitely jazz. Masego could be considered jazz, but he's you know R and B. He's all of that. Um, Thundercat. How many of you guys know Thundercat? Nope, you're that Jamaican welcome. dude. I, I don't the know Jamaican he, dude. I don't. He might. Yeah, be I, I know the Jamaican dude. Thundercat named Thundercat. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if yeah. he's Jamaican. He's definitely he, here in the states. Um, and he's played on a whole host of people stuff. I've actually seen him live. I've seen Masego live. I want to go see Theo Croker, and he's a young cat. Uh, too, by the way, like see, but, doing but the damn most thing. people, most people don't listen to that music, Miss D. We we've him had does. this talk before. Him, him does that, about, that's that's um by Masego and um it's a who? Uh, who group that he's with. Um, it's uh he's actually with somebody on that. Oh gosh, it slipped my mind. Did, but yeah, did you say so Kim? That, uh, no, I, I, I don't you know who Kim is, but no, I didn't say Kim. No, I said most people don't listen to that genre of music anymore. It's 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 an, it's a very it's like it's going out very badly. It's like it's a dying art form. Well, I'm I'm one of those people. Uh, uh, yeah, Donovan Incognito, love Incognito. Um, I'm one of those people. I, I listen to everything, right? I don't normally listen to the. I listen to some mainstream, but I listen to everything. And uh, these people I mentioned. You know, if you love music, these are some of the people that you should know. They are putting out excellent, when I say excellent music, I mean excellent music. Victoria Monet is one of them. Uh, she's been out for a while, but she's uh, up until recently was most notably known as Ariana Grande's writer. So she wrote uh, many of Ariana Grande's uh, Grammy Award winning songs and things like that. And she's had work out on her own. Uh, but this particular album, Jaguar 2, um, really got into the mainstream. But uh she her pen is unmatched and her production unmatched. She's one that um really writes with her and one other person um as well. So um uh, let's see here. True S is how you doing? It says Terrence Martin, Fonte, and Eric um uh, Robinson. Yes, I like um Fonte of uh ah, I just slipped my mind. Uh big brother, little little brother, little brother, I'm tripping, little brother. Um let's see who else y'all talking about. That that's my brother group right there. Uh, my yeah, my uh, little brother, <laughs> little brother, he likes them. Uh, Lucky day, that's my guy right there. That that's my guy right there, boy. I love and yes, Robert Glasper. Um, he is one of the great uh, modern day uh, pianists, if you will, jazz artists. Love Robert Glasper. Uh, yes. Thundercat. I guess he this does. is. I guess this is why I can't date older women. You guys would drive me crazy like, which yeah. with the with the music choices that you have i just i couldn't get down with it are these are young people that uh, i'm talking about thundercat is not a, i don't even think a thundercat I'm, is I'm talking i'm talking about the women that's common uh, i don't see i don't see any men once again i have to stay in my peer group which would be either donovan or this young man and ha have you guys heard of any of these uh 
uh, the person that Demetra named. I know you have Donovan because you you hang out with Demetra. You heard her music. Well, who Lucky Day? Who? No, not Lucky Day. Who's the person you named, Miss D? Victoria Monet. Y'all all heard a song. Oh my mama. Oh yeah. my hood. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That whole Never album. Heard I that whole album and Jaguar. Uh, the, the, the rap song. Well, no, she actually took his and gave him credit. He's in the video and all that. He also won the Grammy for that. She took it and made it into a song. So check it out. No, no, but, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay. So let's go back. One, one second. One second. So, we, so young stop. man, have uh, you heard on oh, my mama a singing? Is it singing or is it rap? No, no, it's a it's a it's a singing version of of a rap song. And, and it and it'd be viral. Like a lot of sisters, they'll take like a pretty picture with it and then have it in the background and be like, oh my mama, oh my hood. I look there you go. Bye. I look good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and how old are you, young man? Not, not to be all in your business. No, you good, man. I'm a man. I'm pushing 32 this year. Maybe 32 in September. Oh yeah. See, there you go. <laughs> you, so, so that kind of explains it. Well, then I know the song. So stop it. <laughs> but you're a woman, though. Act. You're a woman, and he's a young man. It that song jumps with these young male and female. I see it. My oh, grandma, you said young, even be you young. said, I'm I'm 50 though. I'm 50. He he's 32, he's like the same age as my kids. Some of my kids is his age. Are you under a rock? <laughs> no, hey, hey, okay. that wasn't me. Rock, that baby. wasn't me. Look, 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 here. you have you seen the older lady, um, black American? Because if not, I'm gonna find you on social media and I'm gonna send you this old. Oh, and she way older than us. Okay, they a whole married what old couple. Lady? She, 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 my, she probably my grandmother age, and she's in the bathroom talking about you know how she um getting ready for her hot date with her man, and she know the song. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you talking about. So no, yeah. it ain't just these young folks. Once, it's the once again, once again, it is a woman. You guys don't. It's like it's like Corliss. Like I know you. You know who Scarface is, right? Let's do, let's just do this because you know what? I'm sweating. See, I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hot. You, okay. you you got pit you got pit water. I do. Hey, hey, no shame. I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating. I've been working all I, I'm day. I'm just saying, it, it, not not a lot of men listen to women music. I'm just okay. saying that not a not a lot of guys listen to women music. Hey, well, guess what? They been listening to some because that's how they made some of these babies. It wasn't the men that was singing because you got caught up in the rapture of love, and uh, we got a few kids on that one. So I mean, I come, on, come on now, baby face. You got Wait, that whip appeal? Hold on, hold on. I remember being I couldn't have been no more than twelve when Anita uh, was singing with Chad. Hey, I just want to be your girl. I couldn't have been no more than twelve when that came out. So we listen to older music and stuff all the time. I mean, Anita Baker is a, a little bit older than me, but I remember, you know, uh, listening to the Rapture of Love. I was like 15, maybe 16, and we were listening. Uh, Keith Sweat, all of them like the deep R&B cuts, Luther Vandross, and so they were a lot older than us. So, uh, but maybe our music was just a little bit more uh, mature back then. I don't know. But anyway. Demetra, you love to sing Ain't Nothing Betty Going White. On But The Rent. Gwen Guthrie. <laughs> Betty White. Oh, there yeah. were plenty of people listening to the cleanup woman. Listen, I just learned not too long ago, and I was upset to learn that Marlena Shaw passed away. My mama used to wear that damn song out. Go away, little boy. Oh, that was my song. And then I found out she died a couple of months ago. Mm. Well, it's almost like, no remember the group uh, Starpoint, the lead singer of uh, Starpoint, Object of My Desire? That woman was so fine. Whew. Yeah, and you could have been no more than 12 when that came out. Yeah, yeah about more <laughs> I want to point something out, family. Like, I mean, and this is, um, th this is pretty commonly, commonly known, but it's, uh, it's still so tragic to me, man. Like, you know, this for, for the most part, 60s, 70s, 80s. Our people, we used to make music about 
We used to make music about how much we loved and adored each other, man. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. like the like the Isley Brothers, Switch, the Whispers. You know what I mean? All of that was like even like Aretha Franklin. All of that was uh, and and I can't I can't remember who who this was, but I know this was the eighties. That oh, you make my love. Uh, yes, I, 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 Evelyn Champagne yeah. King, produced by Kashif. Yeah, you know what <laughs> I mean. Then you had um, Cheryl Lynn. You know, it's is, but it's like when you when you creep up into the nineties, and I'm a nineties head, so I love, I love the nineties as well because that was some so, some pretty dope music. But it's like that's when things kind of started to turn and be like talk about how how quick you will kill a nigga. Right. Yeah. We need we need to get back. Uh, to those love songs so we can start uh, being nicer to each other. But, you know, we could be here all day talking about music and all that because mm -hmm. I, I really love maybe one day we'll just dedicate a whole show uh, to talking about music. But, yeah, I remember as being a kid listening to, you know, some real all the goodies. And I remember like one of my the first memory of music that I had was of my dad mm -hmm. and he played war um, all day music. I, and you know that's like one of my earliest uh, memories. And uh, oh, what's the name of that song? Oh gosh, I can't think of it right now. Woo, it's gonna come to me when we get off of here. Yeah, it was great back then that he was listening to. So anyway, uh, uh, Dusty, you say I met Tracy Spencer in person. I love the hell out of her. Tender kisses. Yep, uh, she's still around. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my baby L the barge uh, with the mm -hmm. barge and. King David, you mentioned no, switch. Stop it. Okay, yeah. look, Dimitri be Dim Dimitri be trying to give you guys this thing that that you know she's this this totally different person. Dimitri used to roll around talking about the Bonnie and Clyde thing. I'm down for my nigga. I'm doing my thing. I am. I and I and am and I am. Okay. <laughs> I like it all, but yeah, we need to get back to that uh, good music and you know uh, a lot of people, especially if you're from California. Sundays is considered oldies day, right? We 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 bump our oldies uh summer uh the Sunday evening or whatever. So I like to do that from time to time. But anyway, we could be here all day. Alonzo, Art I did Lebeau. already. Art LeBeau. Yeah, Art LeBeau, R.I.P. Uh Alonzo says the barge uh was tough as switch. Yeah, and they wanted uh Elder Barge to try to mimic that of his brother Bobby, and he was like, Oh, I can't do it because mm -hmm. they'll never. They'll never be uh, another one like uh, Bobby DeBarge. So, yeah, I, I, the Switch was a lot older than me, but I remember all these songs. In fact, I got their album sitting there uh, by my t uh, TV right next to uh, DeBarge's album. But anyway, mm -hmm. we're going to get out of here. No, I wasn't sea walking and low riding. I was who riding. I'm just playing. Anyway, we're going to get out here. Love and appreciate every last one of y'all. We will see y'all on Tuesday. Uh, for the podcast and the live show. So you guys have a great evening and enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm going to leave y'all with one more. Just a song recommendation. Okay, I ain't going into anything. Just a song recommendation. You probably haven't heard it before, but I Owe It To Myself by The Gap Band. Look up I Owe It To Myself by The Gap Band. That's a jam. All right. That's all. That's the assignment. All right, y'all. So we'll see y'all later. Happy Bye Easter. Day. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Bring a K day. All right, y'all. Peace out. Peace, peace. Oh, wait, hold on. I thought I ended it. Hold on. I was about to start talking.